I'm, I am fed up with Monty Cook, so I am literally making an Excel sheet. Did something happen with Monty Cook? No, it's just I don't okay, I don't like scrolling through a hundred pages of abilities okay, and just... having, having to help my players find their new abilities whenever they level up. I'm They're just really bad at them. formatting. Okay, I'm running a game for them at Gen Con, so I'm like, did something happen? Like, should I not? No, 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 no. Okay. They're they're great. Just bad experiences on my part. and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in the four keeps dark star legacy part one of our four keeps level 20 adventure today is april 3rd 2023 and you are loved and that is a very important thing that we like to start and begin each of these games with because it feels like that is something that you all should hear at least once every single day if you can uh if this is your first time joining us you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the vods of each of the games that we have played up until this point or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are being made available for free you can find us there under the same moniker and speaking of things that are being made available for free if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures you can check up on our after show called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us again at patreon.com slash indoor adventures. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, where would I even go to ask those kinds of questions? We have a Discord. You can find the link to that Discord in the Twitch chat to the side or in the a description of this video or audio cast down below i forgot the word description for just a brief second but with that in mind let's say that you already support us on patreon you already support us on twitch and youtube and all of those other wonderful places but you're trying to think to yourself where can i go to help support this fantastic show even more well guess what acorns got your back quite literally in fact because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com we got t-shirts we got posters we got mugs we got crop tops throw pillows shower curtains aprons clocks and we also have face masks with the symbol of Tiamat upon them, designed by our very own Cyberwolf1201. So, if you'd like to help, uh, and, hey, guess what? I almost forgot to mention, but it's actually the most important part of this merch, is that all of the proceeds of our merch currently goes to help support Doctors Without Borders. So, if you'd like to help support a good cause, or possibly help support the show, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. That is indooradventure, no s at the end, dot redbubble.com. Uh, but that is it for my opening spiel. So, hey, RJ, who are you playing today? Fuck it up. It's been four years, guys. <laughs> hey, did you hear we're level 20 now? Hey, that's yeah. crazy. He said that the cast was silent. They heard my spiel. So, yes, okay, we okay. are the cast. From, wait, no, no. Yeah, they couldn't hear you guys. They could hear. Oh, man, me. we had some great reads. It's really hard to We did. That was great. Okay, okay. From the top. Okay. Uh, Back to one. Uh, once right, more with feeling. Um, uh, uh. This is how you know this game is scripted. Uh, and with that, hey, RJ, who are you playing today? Hey, everybody, my name's RJ, and uh, today I'm playing Kalum, the Shattered Kai Wizard Fighter. We both go by he, him. I'm so glad that you've I'm been offended. comfortable with us <laughs> to use your real voice that instead of the one you've been pretending to use for the last for so long. Levels. My name is Tootsie Noodles, and I'm from where I'm from, Earth? Farm Planet. <laughs> your last name's what you love, and your first name's what you do. 
you're making Connor very upset. <laughs> this is his culture, and you're appropriating it. <laughs> That's you Starship Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. LB, who are you playing? <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm LB Hack. I'm up. Uh, I'm going to be playing Gwen, the halfling barbarian. We both go by she, her. Boy, I'm Cyber. I use he or whatever pronouns. I play Arjan. Arjan uses he, him pronouns, and he is a draconian bridesmaid. Oh, God. It, it's not fair that I have to go after you. <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. You can find me. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. Damn it. Okay, hold on. Back to one. I'm Hi, so everybody. sorry. Fucked everything up. <laughs> not we just got it perfect the first time. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name's Danae, also known as Wings. She, her, and playing as Coriander, the Elegant Paladin. She, they, and him. And if you've made it this far, you might know who I am. But if you don't, hey, Corrance, what's up? Uh, I am the Indoor Adventurer, he, him, and tonight I shall be playing the Dungeon Master of this campaign. I feel we're all in a squiggly mood tonight, which is going to be an excellent intro into the continuation of our level 20 campaign so let's give a little bit of a recap shall we because last we left off not only did the four keeps learn some valuable information you managed to defeat orcus and when i say defeat orcus i don't mean that it was a close battle like looking at the numbers it seemed fairly one-sided uh it was at that point that you convinced orcus that hey we got a cannon that's going to send you to the river sticks and then you're going to be reborn as a devil at the base level and he was like ah you know what that doesn't actually sound great for me uh again having dropped him down to single digit health point uh hit points he was willing to uh to call it a draw as it were now you managed to get the true name of caius from orcus uh the true name of caius being Firikos abar arn uh abar on at that point orcus peaced out did not want anything to do with the four keeps uh uh, uh, Zariel, the Archduke of Avernus, was there fighting against Bell, uh, who had claimed uh, the former Lord of Avernus. Uh, she took your Hellfire engine and blasted him instead in a show of power after you enlarged her and also cast a haste spell on her. So she was just down to destroy. We also had, uh, pre before this battle, we had a very tender moment between Oliviette and Cory. We had a very tender moment between Arjan and Rasa, the red dragon. Incredible. Uh, and where we last left off, uh, you were standing in this crater, having freshly defeated Orcus. There is a crowd of cheering uh, Goliath barbarian spirits. Um, there are... I mean, there's not really cheering from the devils. They're, they more like look at Zariel. The ones that we're following Bell. They just lay down their weapons and start groveling. And you just see that Zariel looks at her troops, just round them up. Uh, and she then goes to look at you, uh, or then goes over to your group. Uh, and as she approaches, uh, Rasa is actually going to depart from where your group is, specifically because one of the red dragons that she had brought along with her fell in this battle. And since she's How long there, ago was it? Uh, that would have been, I mean, all things it, considered, it took like 25 seconds to nuke Orcus. So, uh, I would say you're within like a five minute range, five, 10 minutes. Give me, mm, mm. like you, I, like, I have to read a spell. Okay. Sounds good. So you are reading the spell. Rasa is still going over, uh, Zariel, uh, as she comes to uh, meet the meet with the four of you as you're standing there, uh, bringing with her this large hellfire engine. Uh, Arjun, did you? How quickly can Rasa get to the dragon? Rasa can get to the dragon very quickly. I would say she can get there within a minute. Yeah, Arjun is going to like as she is going back past. He's going to like grab onto her. Uh... Her barding. 
it, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be something that I definitely can't explain right now, but I'm trying to get to that dragon within a minute because Revivify does not specify humanoid. Incredible. Okay. So you managed to get to uh you managed to get to this fallen red dragon revivify uh as long as you got the spell uh the the slot and the component totally fine uh you go to revivify and the uh uh, uh hedrick the indomitable uh awakens seemingly uh like is is very confused uh because Typically, when you think, oh, a red dragon will die, they'll go to Tiamat, he's already on the same plane as Tiamat, so he remembers getting hit and then just being somewhere else on the same plane as a spirit, and then his spirit was brought back into his body all within, again, like, 12 seconds or so. Um, so, yeah, Hedrick is, like, kind of getting up and the other dragons are, uh, are approaching, the same with the remaining gif. Um, and they are uh, going to discuss uh, how things turned out in the battle. And they are sort of like talking to themselves like, wow, normally we get called in for siege warfare uh, or, you know, like kind of longer campaigns. I think this is the easiest job that we've had in a while. And, you know, Hedrick died. And Hedrick's like, yeah, I fucking, it was actually pretty, it wasn't bad. He was really strong, though. What happened to that guy? Oh, he yeah. got better. Uh, no, the guy that uh, 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 or the oh, one got mazed. <laughs> oh no, Hedrick was the one who got mazed, so he's still kind of doing his thing. Uh, we'll say that it was uh, Tyrus, the Crimson Death. So Tyrus is back. Um, just imagine one less red dragon here, and instead buried beneath the earth. They're going to be digging out for a while, but they'll be fine, I'm sure. Um, and uh they all like uh he asks like oh what happened to bell like that like uh what happened to that guy anyways oh he got banished to the river sticks and you see that this dragon just sort of like chortles and laughs uh at the at the thought of it and arjan you and rasa are here um and you being the one uh with tiamat's help and and rasa's assistance having called this cadre this small legion uh, of red dragons they sort of look to you uh for uh like what should we do next like do you still need us here we're good uh, to stay i i mean i don't i that was that was everything that i needed done and honestly we like with all of your help we handled that uh very exceptionally i don't know if tiamat has anything for you or if Zariel has anything for you but as far as like i'm concern that's it uh good job and they sort of like look to themselves and also give a thumbs up uh and we fought a demon lord in like a minute that was yeah. fucking great yeah all like these red dragons all like again like because red dragons sort of have this hierarchy of like okay who's like a level of strength like who's going to be on top not in the same like brutalist sense that a white dragon uh familiarity would have but these red dragons like they just watched you and your group just dust orcas and like they had there is a a, a pro there is a profound respect that is shared between them like just in your direction like because you also assisted in the dismissal of this demon lord they're like they're very excited uh, as far as receiving any gifts from Zariel, uh, they don't know how they feel about that, mostly because they weren't necessarily contracted through Zariel. They were with Tiamat, but Tiamat and Vlakith have an agreement worked out, uh, so they will receive their payment from there. Uh, and they say, we're just going to take a couple flybys, you know, see if there are any snacks, uh, uh, chilling, that kind of thing, and then we'll get out of your hair. Um... And, uh, Rasa, um, she, uh, she's willing to stay behind, uh, and I think that she would even express as such as that she'll make sure that, uh, because she's, like, she reports directly to Tiamat now, rather than through Vlacketh, so she's gonna stay, 
um, and begin oh. uh, working through that process. It, it helps getting promoted directly from Tiamat. You kind of know who your boss is. Um, so Rasa will, will stick behind uh, for the rest of you. Uh, so Arjan had like hopped on with Rasa. So Zariel has come up to the three of you that are still remaining here and sets down the Hellfire engine. Uh, and as her devils are rounding up the other devils, um, she says, uh, she sort of like pats her arm on the engine and says, if you're in need of any more field testing, I believe I have a few subjects who I could donate to the cause. And you can see that there are a bunch of like devils that are like cowering because, you know, they tried to overthrow like they tried to perform a coup and it failed and uh zariel would let you all know that typically uh there is only one punishment for treason well huh um i don't think i'm qualified to make that decision caitlin Hmm. Uh, well, you know, we will leave it to the courts of the hells um, where their fates may lie. But there is a type of magic that is cast some places called Kadoku, where you get a bunch of poisonous creatures together and they fight it out in one thing. And, uh, well... Whatever comes out is the most poisonous. So, you know, if you want to make them fight pit to the death, that'd be kind of funny. Uh, and Zariel... Leave it for Caleb to take one unethical thing and suggest another. Zariel thinks, like, she doesn't think long and hard about this, but you definitely, like, at least not in, like, a, a, a traditional mortal standpoint. Uh... So is her it... long and hard is like several seconds of contemplation. Thinking I'll consider about this. it. <laughs> uh, she, she does not see a point to it. To her, even if she were to make one of these creatures, uh, one of these devils go through uh, a battle royale style fight, she would derive no enjoyment from this. She has other things that she needs to do. Uh, but she will remember what you have suggested. Uh, she believes that other layers of the hells might have use for such a method. Thumbs up. Cool. Uh, hey, Zariel, um, I am going to need uh, a sparring partner at some point soon. Uh, would you be interested in, a, in, in just fighting some time? Roll a persuasion check. Oh my god, it's happening. I'm a married woman, but you know, the uh, fights aren't. I'll say that's no. what I meant. Just sorry, <laughs> she's literally too advantage. strong for everyone else. Okay. I will say with advantage, one, because like you've said, you are too strong for, for everyone else. Mm -hmm. She just watched you dispatch a demon lord. Uh, 13? 13. Um, okay. That's in the danger zone enough that I'll roll against it to see okay. how she's feeling about this. So we want uh, a thirteen. We want high. We want a we want a higher number than thirteen. Okay. That is a six. Boy. Um. Make he an said, insight check. I'm focusing check. on my career. Make an insight. Insight. Check. Yeah, make an insight That's... check really quick. Uh, nine. A nine. Uh, so she responds, uh, that she would not be able to, uh, as, seeing as how, like, there is this coup that just happened, clearly there, it, there are those that she needs to root out, uh, mm -hmm. on Avernus and possibly lower, maybe raise, uh, not necessarily raise awareness because to ask for help. Uh, as a demon lord is a sign, yeah, yeah. Uh, or as a devil, uh, arch devil is a, a sign of weakness. Uh, but she is going to be more pursuing that. However, uh, she will, uh, if you are requesting a sparring partner, she has 
uh, connections she she would be able to provide you uh, a, a durable sparring partner should you so choose um all right with the nine as you look up at her you get the faintest hint that she just doesn't want to fight you <laughs> You're not Glenn sure why. Like, it could cannon. be like she see, yeah. sees you as beneath her, or uh -huh. she just watched you dispatch a demon lord. But there uh -huh. is a general, like, like I won't oh, be. I, able, I could. I yeah. could, but I'm. I'll get this guy, though, like, uh -huh. big punchy bag. Uh, okay. So she will provide, uh, should you so choose, a. Uh, a summoning right to bring forth a devil to just fight uh, constantly. Or uh, seeing as how she is aware that your party frequents the hells, uh, mm -hmm. you can just drop by. Uh, mm -hmm. People know who you... People in Avernus know who you are at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. Or will by the time that uh, everything's yeah. said and done. Mostly because Zariel can create a decree which influences mm -hmm. all of the devils on the first layer to recognize who you are, to know who you are. Um, so yeah, she is, you know, if you, if you need it, uh, she will uh, provide you a sparring partner uh, and she will give you what a, um, it looks like wrought iron. Like it's like that darkened oily metal, but it is a yeah. wrought iron coin. Uh, okay. That looks like it has a. Uh, it looks like it has uh, 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 like flaming wings on one side of the coin, and on the other you see a crown that is cracked in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, and she says, "Use this coin uh, for your sparring partner." Uh, awesome. Yeah. It's a like a summon devil sort of thing. Yes. Uh, so Gwen, you have been gifted a coin that will summon a specific devil for you to fight. Hey, yo, what do I, do they have a name? Can uh, we name them? We can name them. Um, can it be Jebri? Okay. Do you want the <laughs> devil's name to be Jebri or do you want this to be a situation where, remember, you don't speak infernal. So right, this could right, be right, like right. uh this could be like uh the character of Bob in The Last Samurai where Tom Cruise uh cannot communicate with his individual but is speaking at them and just calls them Bob. Uh, uh where you could be like you're Jebri now and be like oh only if you beat me you clearly yeah. beat them I'm Jebri now. Yeah yeah yeah. I think it it's more of a she cannot pronounce the name that he gives her or that they give her. So it's just going to be like she, was that Jebri? Okay, Jebri. And Jebri like Abibrex. they're like no, it's yeah, it's like I okay, it's close enough. Yep, yep. Uh if you uh if player willing, uh I believe that the best option that Zariel would have for you, uh strictly speaking, I'll have to check and verify. We don't have to look it up now, but um for this if you are in the hells while you use this, um yeah, we we'll, we can we can figure it out later. But mm -hmm. you get a uh, you will have access to a very strong devil. Uh, we can figure that out over the break. Yeah. Uh, so I have more times to uh, yeah, more time to look. Because this fine. is not a thing that I thought was going to happen today. But I'm sorry. Here she, we are. Uh, she has a, up to pit fiends. Yeah. Uh, I would say pit fiend. Honestly. Yeah. Like, she doesn't want to fight you herself. So yeah, this would be mm -hmm. uh, Jebeba Brex the pit fiend. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Uh, you did great out there. You looked. You were in good, good fashion. I saw you take up that weapon, and it was, you did. It was awesome. And you see that, like, as you're saying that, um, like, Lori, like after you say that, she just says, "I know." And then uh, turns and kind of looks down um, and says, or uh, as she turns, she says that she has to go and oversee mm -hmm. uh, uh, the rounding of the, uh, mm -hmm. of, of the people, who, uh, of the coup attemptees. Um, 
but as she turns, she makes sure to tilt her head back. So Gwen, you can see part of her face. And there is the hint of a smile as she says, I look forward to watching you fight. And then pff, away. She's saying she loves to see you work, honey. Girl, I like Gwen kind of like there's a moment she lets the beat pass. And then she turns to Caleb and Corey and just, God, she's really hot, right? Like, that's just not just me. What's wrong with sparring with me? Corey, I can break you in half now. When's the last time we've sparred? That's fair. Okay, okay, we'll spar. Okay. I have personal bias. Right now, no. no I can't. <laughs> We immediately oh, I, start fighting. I am low on <laughs> spell slots. I po I couldn't possibly. <laughs> oh no, towards towards Zario. I have personal biases, so I can't really comment on that. Yeah. I guess that's fair. All right, but Zario is going to go off, uh, and it looks like you have been successful in this endeavor. Caleb um, will turn to Gwen and Corey, holding up the demon on a con. We don't need this anymore, do we? I don't think so, unless we could possibly leverage it against Caius, but no. last I checked, that wasn't a part of the plan. Cool. Uh, he'll summon a speedy courier and send it back off to Sigil. Okay. Where's it going? Oh, hey, what are we doing? Can you roll oh, a d100 I'm... for me, Calum? I don't Where need rope? to if I spend a higher spell slot. I know. Oh. Yeah, rut row. You are sending uh, a very powerful artifact off uh -oh. on its own via magic. Well, Arja. <laughs> roll for season two problem. Yeah, roll hey, for what are we doing? <laughs> roll for a different Um, problem. Sending this back to, uh, oh, Lord, what's her name? Uh, RJ is blank, and Kalen would have remembered. Lady Rasinka. Lady Rasinka. Uh, 75. Okay. Can't we just bring it to her? What? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we should probably do that. Oh, it's already gone. Yeah, that's gone. That was an important book, right? Like, that's... That's fairly important, yes. Um, yes. Very evil book. Uh, very powerful book. What's it got inside of it? Chad? Kevin? Kyle. Right. Yeah. We don't want to release that evil on the world. Yeah. Uh, I was about to make a joke, but lunch? no. The dwarf was the one who pushed me in a lot of lockers. You had lockers? Uh, like a foot chest. Uh, like an Iron Maiden. Uh, uh, lunch, anyone? Yeah. Is there anything else we have to do here? No. Not no. that I can think of, that no. Was, that was it. Um, yeah, we probably ought to eat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, as, Wait, shawarma? <laughs> yeah, shawarma. We, we have our, our brief shawarma moment. Uh, camera pans up, and it's the four keeps and a red dragon all, like, walking away towards uh, towards Tiamat's fortress. Um, we will uh, see ourselves away from the... Uh, from the hells um rasa of course uh will make a um she'll make a a note of departure uh with you arjan um and says uh that she does have to get uh to inform tiamat of their victory though she is uh assuming that tiamat already knows uh given the appearance and the disappearance of a demon lord on the plane um, uh, Ori, uh, were you still spending time with Tiamat? Because, I mean, we could just hang out there. I don't see any reason not to. She's completed her training, right? Yeah. You've, you've gotten the gist. Like, there's only so much that Tiamat can really teach you, and it turns out that the way that she was teaching you wasn't the way that you learned. Right. Well, I, I'm I, I com can completely see 
um, that Corey's just now uh, on like hanging out terms with Tiamat. Yeah. <laughs> like Tiamat's busy, but like, you know, generally she'll make time for one of the heads to hang out. Uh, typically it's Billy. Usually Billy is reserved for fun hangouts. She's the fun one. Mm hmm. She's the white head, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Billy and Corey have definitely sparred. Oh, yeah. No, it's Billy, uh, very similarly, Billy has a fighting style that you have actually encountered before. This is the same way that Jirana fights. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Just complete recklessness, um, throwing themselves beyond caution. A lot of reckless attacks. Uh, mm. It seems grab like... the back of the dude's shirt, pull it over their head, and start wailing on their stomach. Yeah, yeah. Style. They, they are not. Uh, Billy is not a honorable fighter, to say the least. Uh, but you know, if you're going to be fighting Gwen later, this is a this is a perfect training course is to fight the white head of Tiamat. Perfect. Uh, yeah, Arjan just really wanted to like go back and just like be with Rosa whenever they have. Um, whenever they report the success. Yeah. Um, and he is going to bring up um, that, you know, he thinks that soon is probably going to be a good time to go retrieve the eggs if um, if she could give him a location. Yeah. Uh. Um, yeah, she, last you had spoken to her, she was already in the process of getting um, Tylera uh, over in that direction. And it seems like Tylera has just been on a boat for a very long time uh, getting to where the Eggies are. However, uh, if you were flying on the back of a dragon, that trip would be expedited significantly. Uh, if you and Rasa wanted to go to there, because uh, there is a a question as to where the eggs are exactly, because uh, from Tyler's standpoint, there wasn't a way to like zoom in the map to like, oh, it's this longitude, this latitude is where the things are going to be. Like she never got access to that level of cartography. Um, but she has a general idea of like where in a region she would be able to find these things. Uh, so if you are interested in pursuing that, uh, Tiamat would definitely be willing to send you there. Yeah, that's... Um, he's not saying that this is something that he wants to do at this moment. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he's just saying, I think that that's something that we can do before we take on Caius. Um Um, and he'll, you know, say, you know, there's just a few things I want to take care of before then, a couple of things that I want to see. Um, and then just, like, kind of out, out of left field, he's going to say, um, he, like, I... Part of me really, well, before doing all this, also wants to see, like, what's left of the ash and after. I didn't get that big of a chance um to see it um in the short amount of time where i went there with one of my echoes tiamat nods um uh does tiamat or rasa react to the fact that arjan is communicating with echoes rasa does i i am fairly certain tiamat i believe you've told about her your echoes before so she doesn't react as strongly um, to, or at least did not react as strongly to you speaking with them. Uh, she does react a little bit more when you say that you've been interacting with them. Um, and she seems pleased uh, with that development. Rasa, however, um, like, if there was any way, like, you know, like, when a relationship is new and you're learning more about that person, you're like, wow, I'm learning great things about you each and every day. And then you said like, oh, by the way, uh, 
you know that thing uh ancient dragon culture called a great worm i'm i'm experiencing like little particles of that and ross is like oh my god it's like you're superman like she's just astounded uh at this and and um she offers uh that should you need protection uh she would be willing to uh assist in the exploration of this place um and tiamat sort of smirks at rasa's suggestion that she could go with you uh and says that it is up to you arjan if the if you would like for the two of you to go um but she has the ability to transport you there uh should you so choose I, I, I have no idea what we're doing right now. What are we doing right now? Uh, and um, as this is <laughs> you saying, what are we doing right now? Uh, is roughly around the same time, uh, or that had been you and Rasa being taken there, uh, to the separate thing. So if you're asking Rasa, Rasa just sort of shrugs and says, "I'm going with you whenever you're ready." Um, whereas the rest of the party, um, Arjan had gone with Rasa to report the three of you like sticking around. I know that Gideon is keyed near here as well. So you could just be back at the house. Um, we got takeaway, went back to the house to eat. You realize that takeaway from the hells is not the best. Uh, the chicken's incredible. It's good whenever you take it out of Avernus. Yes. Huh. So if you eat it, if you eat it in Gideon, it's it's fine. Yeah. Like I said, the chicken is absolutely incredible. They have fantastic page pastries, far better than they should have any right to be. <laughs> Asmodeus fried chicken. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, okay, so. What's uh what it was everyone get up to? We still have some time before we need to go deal with Caius, right? So Oh ah uh, I need to meet Diantha's parents. Oh, you haven't done that yet? Yeah, no. <laughs> I also proposed it... to her. You, you did what? what? I don't believe that you did. You had mentioned that you were thinking about things. I'm going to propose to her. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, Caleb! Have you? Is Arjun have you filled? This? Yeah, Arjun, you, you were like walking in the door, like this is the the traditional sitcom, uh, and you have heard Caleb say <laughs> that he's thinking about proposing, and you walk into frame. Audience Arjun walks to the door. Audience like, yay! <laughs> Oh. What, what, what do you mean paperwork like am i in a different tax bracket because i an eldrin wedding requires a lot of oh my dear sweet child we need to see my mother what why <laughs> arjan hi i'm hi. going to need to have a crash course i uh, oh we're talking weddings oh oh god uh, no, no, uh, Caleb is thinking about proposing to Diantha. And when are you going to have a wedding? That is a well, good I guess question. she has to say yes first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Step one, step two. How are you going to do it? You know, if you fuck it up, she's going to say no. Or try again. That happens a lot in, in the halfling community. It's entirely possible, yes. At the thought of Diantha saying no, Gilm's just sinking lower and lower mm -hmm. into his seat until he becomes a puddle on the floor. The seat becomes just like a giant beanbag as you like sink deeper into it. Like it forms to just maintain comfortability. How well do you know your flowers? What? How well Why? do you know her? <laughs> Pretty well. I spend most of my free time with her. What's her favorite flower? Cherry blossoms. Oh, right. you don't want to send her cherry blossoms. That means no. I never want to see you again. Ro 
roses are always a solid choice. Mm, depends on the color. Oh my god, You're there's so much I didn't than know. Roses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna send her food too? Is food a thing? Food's a big thing with us. Kaum is going to get up from his chair. Gideon, library, please. Door opens. Caleb starts walking into the library. The door shuts behind him, and there is just silence that permeates the entire house. We're really going to have to help him with this, aren't we? Yeah. Most but first, likely, I would like yes. you to help with me. Are, Are you going to propose too? No. No, no, oh. no, no, no. Um, but. Okay. I have you ever been in a relationship and just not felt like the right person for the other person? Like just mm, not me personally? Have you ever have you ever had a relationship where you just felt weird about it? In what way? Um, I mean, it's the usual shit for me. Um, body, body dysmorphia, uh, just not really feeling comfortable and all of that. Um, the fact that the only time I do feel comfortable is whenever I'm transmogrified into a dragon body that looks exactly like my father, who tried to take over my body um hmm. yeah i i i i i've kind of worked most of it out it still feels hmm. a little weird i'm not even thinking about the fact that ross is significantly older than i but you know right and the romantic element is what's causing issues not really. Uh, it, it's not really an issue. An issue. It's just, I. There's still part of me that feels weird, and I don't know if that's ever going to go away. But I just kind of want to know if you related or how you dealt with that. If you ever dealt with that, but apparently you didn't. So I'm. Well, mm. I, I, I will say, um, in a relationship, if you feel, and uh, this is in general, if you feel like you aren't good enough for them and you feel like you are like you can't give them enough or whatever it is i think in that you will if you are conscious of that you definitely are good enough for them because people who aren't good enough and people who are like not great at relationships aren't conscious of those things right Right. I, that wasn't a question. That's right. You're Sorry. being honest with yourself and with her, and that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. When I was being influenced by Shah, I went through a really rough patch with Olivier, and it was because I couldn't, didn't tell her. And that obviously caused a lot of problems for all of us. But especially with her. I think being honest in this way is going to go a long way. The door to the library bursts open. Calum now has a stack of books under one arm and a list of flowers. Okay, I did a little bit of... Why is the air so somber in here? Hold on. Uh... Yeah, it's it, it. you didn't miss much. Corey walks right, over and starts in investigating the flowers, looking for any, like, you know, misconstrued messages in them. Arjan, I think as I know that you still have some stuff that you you would like to work through and stuff that you need to figure about out about yourself. And I think I mean, I don't know her that well, but. I think that if she wants to be there for that, she's 
I think that's going to be better, honestly, you know? Like, I think that, I mean, you're an awesome person. Well, you're, you're an awesome being. And whether you want to be the way you are or whether you want to be a full dragon, I don't think that any of us are going to care. You, as long as you're happy, and I don't think that she'll care, right? Ah, I got it. Is that what you're worried about? Kind of. I, I, again, I'm not really worried about it. It's just... Trying to find somebody who can relate. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get over the, the weirdness. Yeah. Hmm. Does it hurt? No. It's just kind of like anxiety. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, it's okay. like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I drank this, I drank this little potion that I made out of my blood, and I'm a big fucking dragon, and I feel good. Oh, shit, this is the body of my piece of yeah. But she mm. likes it. Do you like you it? like it? Yeah, but again, there's weirdness there. It yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. Weirdness. Could you could you turn into a different dragon? Or do you have to be that dragon? I mean, that's the body that the vessel turns me into. Hmm. Well, I uh, don't really know a lot about magic, but if there, I'm sure there's if if that is something that's too weird for you and you're not comfortable with it, I think there are other ways to turn into other things, right? Like you could be, I mean, there's right polymorph. Yeah. Polymorph. I feel like I'm out of my wheelhouse here. Am I talking at my ass? No, you're somewhat correct. Oh. Arjan, we'll support you. Whatever decision you may make. I... I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that I turn permanently into a dragon right now. I'm just... Hey. I'm just working through some stuff. No, that's, yeah. that's fair. Um... From what I can gather from the conversation, yeah, it it feels weird when you're using something that uh, for a long time was bad for you. Um, it's just something you're going to need to work through. In my opinion, that form you take isn't Tarlane's form. That's you. That's your form. So what you do in that form oh, has no bearing on previous um, you know what I'm trying to say yeah I, I, I do we are given many things by our forebears our bodies our experiences from a young age A lot of our beliefs. There comes a time when you have to take ownership of them and realize that it no longer belongs to those who came before us. You're right. I'm going to go wreck his house. You know? Oh! That wasn't what I was getting at, but if it's going to make things better, then I support it. It always go, makes things better. Do you want to go help? to the Ashen after? Yes! <laughs> rage room, rage room, rage room. Hori hands the flowers back to Caleb and says, these are good, but very traditional. Diantha's going to want something modern, a little twist. Since we're talking about things, Corey, how's your relationship going? 
it's going well. They're hanging out on the beach as we speak. That's a good question. Do I, like, I don't have a live feed of what's going on no, there, do I? No, but all right. when the forms rejoin, as Tiamat has said, you'll get all of the memories yeah, of I'll that. Yeah, I'll re regain all of the memories. But oh, you have um, trust in Spring Cory. I do. We um, macked it a lot on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll have to check um, when I get back. But I think it's going well. Solid. Are you going to propose soon? Well, that's a good question. Hmm. I haven't really asked Olivia if it's something that she's interested in. Mm -hmm. Personally, I didn't want her to go through the whole rigmarole. My mother's going to make a big deal of it. Mm. Is your mother a big wedding sort of parent? Oh, not necessarily, but Eligrin society kind of is. Mm-hmm. Sort of that when someone finds out the entire community is invited. Um, it's or is it a less, who's who sort of dealy? It's less of an event and more of a. Hmm. Have you ever had to buy a house? No, Gideon no. came free with a property. I right. Was <laughs> Thanks, Gideon. We all Thanks. just kind of usurped them. <laughs> Arjan has bought a house. That's that's <laughs> Arjan did buy a house on her ass, but it was kind of given it. It's more of a social endeavor. Oh, Caleb, will there be fighting at your wedding? No, hopefully not. Oh, okay. It depends. Well, I... Does she have any other suitors? Ooh, I'll be your champion. <laughs> that we don't kill anybody. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's important. Okay, Gwen. Yes. Do you have any other suitors? <laughs> Motions to himself. <laughs> Does it look like I have suitors? The question I... still stands. You might not know. <laughs> that's true. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh, let me just ask my dad. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Look, I was betrothed from a long... I, I'm sure if any of my exes found out that I was getting married, they'd come running. And the fact that they didn't just is... The, we kept it so well under wraps. Well, know? all things considered that I was divorced from the Shadow Plane um, and my father was banished to his own very small demi plane there probably wasn't time to set up any weddings between myself and other shadakai children oh no, no no i'm talking about like people you met along the way that are like yearning for you does it look like anyone yearns for me well someone why has not? to oh yeah yeah why not i mean you're a great elf thing wow <laughs> thanks gwen you're a great oh. halfling thing too thanks no i don't know if i have any suitors um i guess that drow family but that place is toast come to think of it are there any shadow kai traditions that we should be considering Gideon Library. The door just pops open. Again, I haven't been part of the Shadar Kai in forever. Door slams. Silence. Would a sister rules. know? I have a sister. Ellen has a sister? Coriander. Oh, season of death. Oh. Mm -hmm. I will... It's possible. I'll speak with them. Soon. Double checking to see if I have another spell slot to just yoink her again. Um, I don't think so. Well, we can always do it tomorrow. Um, yeah, at some point I'll want to get back to the tribe before we go anywhere. But I nope, am I'm... excited. <laughs> Never mind, I've got one. Uh. Sister. 
Uh, the door. You hear a knocking at the door. Season of Death walks in. There's another audience. Like, oh, hi! <laughs> just like waves, waves, waves. Caleb strides across the room, grabs her by the hand, walks to the library, <laughs> dragging her. This is going to make your head hurt. She just says, "This is forward." <laughs> See, 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 you see? do. I told you. <laughs> She's just confused, but you take the Raven Queen into the library. And there is a chat. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as far as uh, Shadarkai traditions, uh, for being wed, typically you would go out into the wasteland uh and you would hunt a beast hunt of something legends. together yeah, you, yeah. Would, you would do a little uh traditionally many thrill seeking activities were had to help permit uh uh the um the bond to help create a a stronger uh mutual experience it's like when you eat good food with somebody you start associating that food with them uh, same thing with thrill. Uh, with I'm thrill I'm pretty sure releasing the extinction event that is both Diantha and Calum on the Shadowfell will be great for the ecosystem. Oh yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing. You have to get some enjoyment out of it, right? Like, but uh, yeah. I assume Calum would just be like, ah, oh, these are all small fries, and Diantha would be like, nah, I'm bored. Let's go home. And there's like the entire field is just destroyed. Um, but uh, oh, but I was is, just getting warmed up. Uh, we'll find somewhere better. Uh, <laughs> so that is uh, the traditional Shatterkai uh, uh, practice uh, as far as traditions go. Uh, obviously, you would invite other members of your family. Uh, you don't have to. Um, it's it is just one of those like uh, I guess you bring people like it's not. It's more of a production because of their history as an elven society, whereas the Shatterkai themselves kind of developed these additional traditions like going hunting and and things like that. Um, but as a whole, I. Uh, they don't seem to have very many. It seems like, again, with the way that the Shatterkai had existed for well over a thousand years, when you get reconstituted as a fully grown adult and you know that you're, if you die, then you'll just become a fully constituted adult again, um, relationships and, and even a sense of identity kind of get blurred a little bit. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Um, she says, are you going to have a wedding? My, she has to say for, yes first. Oh, she'll say yes. She, like, taps you on the shoulder. Cool, cool. Uh, well, if sh things do go well, expect an RSVP in Ascending. Love to join. Thank you. Yeah. The door to the library creaks open. Caleb just skulks out of it, just getting... The just the nervous wizard energy is back. And you hear like like a, a flutter of feathers and the Raven Queen is gone. So what are we doing first? Uh well if uh if you still need time to prepare for what you're doing. Um I think Tiamat said that she would send us to the Ashen after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. she's she is willing uh whenever you need to just she was willing also if you wanted to bring Rasa along. Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. So yeah, as soon as you have made your decision ready, um Tiamat can either teleport you all and your house to the Ashen after, or just you all and then your house will just hang out uh here in Avernus, being fully defended by Tiamat in her fortress. I mean, yeah, let's bring the house, and then whenever we're done, we can pop over to Gwen's place. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, upon arriving at the Ashen After, Arjan, you have been here before. Uh, I've been in 
the room where yes. the teleportation circle was. That is correct. Would where you like are to be? we? So Tiamat would have put you in the, as far as space goes, she has placed you in the, almost like the entryway slash um, uh, like console room where you would go and, and speak to the ruler, kind of this, this generalized throne room. Um, and you can see that there is what looks to be like a large stone dais uh, that is set up with a, it's not even in one piece anymore. It would have been an ancient piece, of, like a, a large pillow of some such uh, centuries, a millennia ago, uh, but it has since uh, gone with time. Uh, there is, uh, and it's dark in this room uh to say the least so the only light that sort of is spraying out or uh splaying out comes from gideon itself as well as rasa uh kind of goes towards these torches uh and she will just begin to like uh and begin like lighting up path uh pathways and you see that at the back end uh, which would typically lead into this throne room. Uh, are these are this set of double doors? One of the doors is kind of broken in and has uh, like rocks and and other pieces of landscape that seem to have settled on to it. Uh, Arjan, this being there the last time that you were here as well, just sort of this almost subterranean sunken fortress. Uh, this castle and Rasa. Um, she actually begins uh she's actually going to go over and start like kind of digging at it um see her idea being that uh if this is like landfall that has occurred onto it and this was supposed to be an entryway entryway has to be at least close to the surface um also because even though you do have a house that you can exist in uh oxygen in a enclosed area is still something that you do have to take into consideration. So she is going to be burying out the side of this hole unless anyone would like to assist her. But getting a general look at this throne room, you can see that there is a, uh, there's a lot of stonework here and it's like finely crafted stone. And what you're guessing is that this isn't necessarily a uh something that was like dwarven made or goblin made or gnome made a lot of the stylings of it is like the stone was hewn away with acid like it had like compositionally it looks like this was melted into place so this place even though it is built and has even small rivulets that for stylistic purposes that go up the side of these columns it looks like everything here was almost like naturally formed into this way by some form of caustic creation. Um, there is a large, uh, what looks like a large stone version of the chalice that Arjan has gotten and had been using for ages and ages and ages before it transformed uh, into what it currently is now. Uh, but looking at this thing, it is this large cup, for lack of a better word, it's this large chalice that has these new, uh, immensely sized bloodstones that are set into it uh, on a uh, at an angle going around. Uh, also in this, uh, also in this room, you can see that there is a like uh, against the back wall where you're assuming Tarlayan would sit. There is like a large fresco of what looks like a black dragon just like going across a, a landscape, people running and screaming off to the side. Like it looks like this is a testament uh, to what he believed his true power uh, in, in terms of vanity was. And there are other uh, areas that you see could possibly lead deeper into this place. But for the most part, it is what appears to be this, this kind of sunken throne room. The um, earth that's blocking the entryway. Um, does it does it look like this similar, um, a similar rock to um, everything that was like acid marked? 
or does it look like something um more resist or more or less resistant to acid like are we talking limestone or granite this is it does not look like limestone or granite it does look like more of this stone it looks with as high of a survival check as you have and as well as nature i'm not going to make you roll for this it looks like a landslide at some point had covered the front entrance of this place um based on on previous conversations with tarlan um he did not die in this place uh so you're guessing that nature in and of its way either collapsed over it uh or other individuals were like this place is evil and she'll never see the light of day and covered it for uh, uh tactical reasons but for whatever reason uh it does not look like it is a acid resistant rock it looks like this is sort of a uh, uh, landslide kind of material that slew that comes from the top of mountains okay so so i'm thinking that um if if it were to be wiped away there would still be stuff on top of it that would continue flowing so that might be bad you're guessing uh that that might be the case however rasa is a rather large sized creature um so creating a tunnel uh is uh, it is a sizable tunnel to say the least uh and you're guessing that this isn't her first time having burrowed uh having seen her cave uh in the astral sea you're kind of getting the sense that she probably dug that out for herself it wasn't a uh, a pre-existing chamber for her to rest in oh. sorry I, I i was kind of hoping for this whole like moment of you know take or take back my identity and everything but honestly all this is pretty sad um Uh, I'm going to uh, use the Draconic Vessel um, and uh, at, to become an adult Black Dragon and okay. um, uh, attempt to Acid Breath the rocks that are uh, blocking the way. Yeah, try to erode okay. those away. Yeah. No, and I'd say with you and Rasa working together, you using your breath weapon... Um, and getting that taken care of, the two of you are able to burrow out of this landfill in about 30 minutes. Uh, and when you are done, it is a sizable opening. And, like, you have created a cave mouth uh, into this now opening. Uh, and when you are able to see the sky again, it is clouded. It does not look like it has seen a blue sky in as long of a time as this fortress has been buried, it looks like like putrid marshland that you can see. Like there are like belches of flame that seem to occur every once in a while. Like the the still water has gotten that like orange and black like rust kind of mold that seems to be going in it, and it is a swamp. And you can see that where there possibly once were buildings or large walls, they have almost sunken in to this swamp-like area. It seems that that this place scorched beyond belief and then gained control by a black dragon has never fully recovered from the ecological damage of having been a site of warfare marsh. You do not see any, uh, and it looks like anything that would have been like engines of war or or any kind of garrison, anything like that from when Tarlane was here. All of that has been ransacked, scrapped down over the years there, that it's been here. There's just nothing nearby. The only things that you can see with your perception and with Ross's perception are um, down at the base of this mountain that you have come out of uh you can see that there are tents 
uh, and there is what looks to be like a gated off area. Um, and hearing the sounds of a mountain rumbling, uh, there are a series, uh, a, a, a large cluster um, of what look like small reptilian creatures. They have long snouts, little tails. Uh, it looks like there is a, a, a cobalt cluster uh, that seems to exist at the bottom of this mountain. And seeing the two of you, they scatter into their, into their tents. And then you see like little snouts and heads poking out. And then one of them with this rather ostentatious looking headdress pokes their head out and waves largely at the two of you. And you can see that they have, uh, it looks like, like animal skin that they are wearing, but it is animal. Like you're not sure what the animal is, but it has seen better days and they bow in your direction and you can see that the centerpiece of this ostentatious crown is one large black dragon scale and they are speaking to you although they are far away at the bottom of this mountain and, and can't you cannot hear it but they are shouting something towards you oh oh do you think they think you're... Arjan, how common are dragons on this plane? Uh, there is one. Normally, when we would go to different planes, we had a protocol for showing ourselves. They're, they are cute, though. And you can see that, like, more of them have, like, like, one is, like, holding up a small cobalt to the sky. Like, others are, like, bringing out tools and they are just, like, amassing what treasure that they have. And it's not good treasure, but it's their treasure. Oh, my God. Arjan, you have to go talk to them. <laughs> Like, you gotta tell them that this, that's not, that's not what we're doing. Are we gonna destroy their home? Is that what no, we're doing right no, now? No, 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 no. We're absolutely not gonna do that. Uh, okay. There's no way that they could have gotten in here. Right. But um, we should talk to them before we do start wrecking stuff, right? Do you want me I to talk to them? Yeah, I, I, di I didn't want to wreck the place. I wanted to loot it. Um, oh. 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 Everyone, oh. <laughs> no. I mean, you can wreck, you can wreck whatever you want, but yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go down. Okay. After, Would you like some company? After I use the blood chalice. Okay. The big blood chalice? The big one. Okay, so <clears throat> Arjan, as you in your full draconic majesty use the large blood chalice, the blood goes in and it is a, it is just a, a, a smattering, like it's a big hand, it's a big boy, no, even when it's regular Arjan, he has to fill the cup with it, like it is a lot of blood to go into this large chalice. But as you do, you can see that your draconic vessel begins to glow with this caustic green light. You can see that the bloodstones that line the side of this large chalice also begin to glow. And as you see, as you've seen a multitude of times, that the patterning on the stone itself begins to depict uh, what you read as a, a almost numeric value of how good or bad something will possibly happen to someone uh, at some point in time. The patterning on the gems shifts and changes to show something you've never seen before. And it is a series of letters. 
And from what you're able to see on those letters, it says, look into the mirror. With your draconic scrying glass. And you can see... I, I might... It might be in me at the moment. <laughs> we will say that there is a glowing on your chest where you've typically had your, like, Tiamat symbol... And you are able to, like, pull it out. And it seems like it is sized for your draconic fist at this point. Um, and as you look into it and do as the things say, and you see that there's your face, your large draconic snoot. And behind you, there is the Arjan that you were used to seeing, hood up, no wings. Tilting, you see that there is another Arjan, this one wearing more like researchers' robes. There is the humanoid that you've seen. And as you kind of tilt this mirror around the room, you can see that each member of your cue cards is standing in this room. Oh. We, okay. We all decide to show up here right now. Um, and, uh, it looks like there is, like, a, a murmuring, and, like, some are, like, I, like, looking at the others, like, they didn't know, uh, what was going to happen, and the, uh, Arjun the Flightless, uh, says, it was suggested by our queen that we meet here. And um, as the uh, as the letterings fade, you see that there is actually a slot where one of uh, the bloodstones that was set into this chalice had actually broken off and fallen. And the uh, mirror that you have is of the perfect size and shape to set into this chalice. And as you slide the chalice in, there is a wash of that same vibrant, bright green energy that washes over the inside of Tarlane's palace. Corey, Gwen, uh, Calum, Rasa, and Arjan, all of you see that it is a number of this palace begins to overlay itself with some places seeming more solid than others. Like it is a, a almost like, like being in a VR setting where you know that there's not something there, but your brain is registering that you can still reach out and touch it. But in some instances, when you reach out and touch it, it is actually there. It's like this, this like bleed effect. And there are a multitude of Arjans that are here in this place. And they uh, all have, uh, like, they're all not 100% opacity. But your Arjan. Is, is this okay? Is this okay? What's happening? And Rasa just sort of, like, like doesn't know how necessarily to respond to this, but she... When, like, grabs for her axe, like... I'm just as I, good does, or bad i don't know does arjan seem to be in distress no okay uh cory puts out a hand and says let's wait and see how this ends yeah, okay. he, he just seems confused like team that wanted us all to be here clearly the echo uh, the echo mirror um was meant to be in this uh chalice does Aaron has Aaron any clue what's going on um <clears throat> Arhin explains uh from what their understanding is uh and kind of looking around this is the first time that you've all become this aware of each other. 
as uh, uh, as others have have kind of uh, as you've experienced, like you've met with one, sometimes like you've met with one spirit, like communicated with another, but never have you seen the lot of you together in this moment. And there is a there is that familial connection that kind of happens like when you're around your family members how like you sort of feel yourself relax but also be a little bit more on guard because it's like oh yeah it's my family they're the only ones who know my deepest dark secrets like there is just that that kind of sense of, of both comfort and unease but uh you can see that uh the the dragon version of arjan looks at you and he is small comparatively because he does not use magic to turn big he has been naturally growing from small dragon size so like looking at you just like like slack jawed at this sight of you as this this large dragon and uh i believe it would be Aaron who who sort of pipes up and says i believe the queen had stated that you might be in need of some assistance which is why she brought all of us here together that and apparently other dragons can't do this also who is she and like a lot of arjans like turn and are just like whoa like and rasa just hello and they like Two Arjans I, are already hitting it off, like speaking to each other. I will I will introduce Rasa with her full title. And there which is Which I definitely remember. Yeah, there are there is applause, some like, oh wow, yeah. Uh these Arjans seem seem definitely um like that's awesome. You got a lieutenant of Tiamat to to join up with you. That's super cool. Um and I mean I, I mean the the blood lord is the only other um arjan that i i think would have an idea of like what's what is specific about this place that mm -hmm. would would help with this so I'll, i mean i'll ask him what's going on um the blood lord would explain that this chalice this place well rather this place is a origin point from his understanding that this is a central place where as clones as as recreations what have you of tarlean regardless of where they are now outside of arin who is a draconic blood sorcerer but even then, the origin starts here. That this place is where, for for lack of a better word, uh, Arjan was created in this place. Um, for at least what they are, uh, they are considering as Arjan being the grouping of you. The bloodstone, the the reasoning behind that is that the stone itself represents possibility. That's why it's typically used for divination, in that the speckles and spatterings inside of this stone, the way that you've seen it change, you've already seen that in, this, in these instances, that luck, that number, uh, that you essentially get to pull out is effectively what would happen to that individual from a different timeline like from one of the different arjans being in that same scenario when you tap in and say he gets a 14 it is an echo of that alternate timeline and from the majority of and you see like each of them pulls out like the chalice they each pull out their own version of it whether it is a stone chalice others that like uh, Aaron has has turned theirs into much more of like a finer drinking chalice. It looks like it wasn't necessarily like 
uh drink it it might have been that to begin with but they like transmuted the materials over to something else um uh arjan is going to um just grab his uh grab the wrap his claws around the edge of the chalice and look back in and with his 15 that he rolled whenever he made the vital sacrifice is going to make an arcana check uh of 21 to know what the fuck do i need to do here okay so what this has done and what this has effectively done is that the lines of communication are open rather than needing a rolodex uh or having the rolodex say like is this is is this individual nearby you don't have to worry about where they are proportionally to you as the relation that you currently share in this proximity is creating almost like an echo effect for uh for that connection because the more time that you all spend being able to see each other being able to communicate to each other the more that this sense of reality is blending together there's this communal ideal uh, or idea about what this place is, what this place even looks like, based on all of these different perceptions. But because of the way that the magic is is exhibiting itself, it is all of your consciousnesses are sort of like creating what this, like what you all remember this temple to be. And you feel like this is largely in part because it is so inherently tied to you. Uh, as far as what you need to do, you have in this moment the ability to ask of them anything that they would know, uh, ask for any request, and they as a group uh, will begin to work together. As, uh, like I said, they have begun talking amongst themselves and, and already forming like closer bonds in terms of like, oh yeah, like the barbarian is obviously going to go to the fighter and be like yo you hit guys too like there is that that sense of camaraderie amongst them um and you feel like if there were a way to further strengthen this bond that one thing that you could all do is to even though you've already used your uh you've already gotten your benefit your role for the day if you were to all share of your cups as a group, as one in this place, you feel like as far as that unobtainable sense of self goes, you feel like this, this action would bring you closer to what you idealize yourself to be. Okay. Uh, I would like to know what that does. Yes. So I will definitely do that. But first, just since everybody else, it seems, has also been here in a, different versions of this, I do just want to ask if there was anything valuable in the place in any of their realities. Uh, it looks like the only one who had something valuable uh, by the time that they got there, other than, uh, like, there wasn't anything inherently magical. Uh, as, again, once all the dragons had sort of been rooted out, uh, the local kingdoms and fiefdoms said, all the dragons are gone, but all their stuff is now, like, it, we just gotta go, we just gotta cut through some kobolds. We just gotta cut through the, like, the small guys. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the, like, artifice or, or any of the, the goodies uh, for lack of a better term, uh, was since then used to start up the warring nations uh, to like kind of continue on. Like, oh, the red like the red dragon leader is gone. I have the red dragon leader's weapon. I'm gonna go and and carry on that that legacy of violence. Uh, and it seems like that is is kind of what happened. Uh, the only one who says that they found something valuable uh, in this place would actually be the blood lord. Uh, but you realize that they are referring to having a sick castle. Uh, and they were also, like, raised here. Like, whereas you were uh, raised at the tower, 
it seems like this was the blood lord's childhood home um and so uh they even let you know like a lot of this by the time that that they were even coming into being a dragon uh had been reclaimed either by uh the local populace marauding bands wayward adventurers uh but they were not able to find anything inherently themselves what happens if we go super ego if you go super ego one of two things can happen you gain the abilities of your echoes in the way that we had described before or the way that you and i had talked about before uh it can either happen uh like effectively at this point um or if you are uh and it's like an after image of them would all leave and then join into you and then that's how you would kind of gain this additional strength as you are in this point at the at the highest level that any of the other arjans could could theoretically be uh so uh a, a kind of that not necessarily a pack mentality but where you have like the alpha predator uh in Wolves, I don't even think animals use that really. I think that's they've recently disproved that was a thing. It wasn't recent, um, but yeah, it's it's that kind of thing where it's like you are the biggest, strongest one, uh, so the others are going to power you. Uh, for, and likewise, will also kind of gain their own abilities, um, and you would be able to tap in uh, to the strengths and abilities of your echoes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. That is the feeling, Arjan, that uh, that kind of overtakes you, uh, not overtakes, but like you get that sense where it's just like, I can be like, I can have that, that super ego element play in. And as you drink and you watch and the rest of you also watch all of the other Arjans, like in a very like Stepford wives moment, like all take, uh, a sippy at the same time you watch as they each begin to glow with that same caustic energy that you've seen as like after images of them seem to go into the cup and like make the blood glow that same color and they each are drinking of the echo of one another it seems like this is the like they are each having this moment of super ego where they have stopped being arjan as a whole and have started being Arjan as a collective. You don't necessarily gain the like omniscience where like you're seeing through each one of their eyes at this point in time. But th as I stated, their strengths have, have now become yours as the earliest stage of what one might consider a great worm has awakened. And as this energy is filling you, Arjan, and, and Corey, you are looking and Rasa like like, she's just like, I just witnessed a god ascend. Like, this is such a great day for me. There's going to be paperwork because I had a friend die and then get brought back to life. But, like, I'm living in this moment right now. Calum, you're watching this and thinking, like, that's sick as hell. I wonder if yeah, there's it's... a way for me to do that. Because we, I fucking, I know Calum. There's part of you. I can see it. Yeah into oh i know exactly how oh, i can baby. do this Ooh. um and and gwen you are watching is like all like arjan just like he was glowing he drank from this glowy thing and you kind of make a uh like an exhalation of like wow that was wild you... is that what i look like when it happens there is a clattering i wouldn't know i'd gwen. have to ask philip <laughs> Gwen, there is a clattering behind you and then some scuffling and you see that there are three cobalt heads, these little black scaled cobalts 
that have their snoots like scooby-doo uh totem poling around the corner with the one on the top having this large headdress that looks like it's swamp grass with this black dragon scale set into the middle uh as they are just like like gobsmacked at what they have just witnessed Ah. and as all of this takes place that is where we are going to go into our break for the evening we're going to try and be back in five to ten minutes so don't go to a place unless it's to grab a food grab a drink grab a friend or possibly go to indooradventure.redbubble.com pick yourself up something nice and we'll see you all shortly all right everybody see you soon and we're back diamond ah well hmm there are 14 of Arjun here in this room. Um, which one of us has the blue check mark? Oh, who paid $15? Um, okay, but who also has the Doge icon? Because apparently that's a thing on Twitter now. I don't have it on, on the app. I only have it on the website. Browser, yeah, yeah. I don't like looking at uh, it. Because thankfully, that is not a friend. Space Karen keeps forgetting about the Android app. <laughs> Uh, I would say as far as uh, which one might have had it, the one who works at Stone Mantle R&D. Like, not really a tech bro, but still is just like, no, no, no. Like, it's going to be the next trend. It's going to be like, think about it, a digital horde, right? Like, you could just have so many assets just saved away and no one would even know. And then they'd come up at you and you'd be like, ah, incredible. There's just 14 of us. We're each looking at uh, through the Rolodex. And just, this person was either verified or they paid 15 gold pieces. Either way. Uh, for Adamantine. <laughs> bring him in front of the tribunal for his crimes. Bring, bring him before the others. Um, but yeah, as you, uh, as you have gained the ability uh of all of these other arjans and the um the thing is is that the other arjans like they begin to fade uh as the power transference happens but the state of the palace remains the same it does not look nearly as disheveled and decrepit like there are actual like tabards and tapestries that you know are like you put those there well not you necessarily but the blood lord put those there um so like the coloring is are things that you would enjoy and again these these three kobolds the chieftain uh and then it looks like like one of the guards and then uh a third one who you're not really sure what their deal is they don't have a weapon with them um uh but they have like a little like it looks like a an opera glass that they're using as a spy glass uh to try and look uh deeper in and seeing this uh, they immediately scramble out into the entrance of this doorway. They get on their little knees and just, we are not worthy. And you see oh the God, one with adorable. the hat. My Lord, long have we awaited this glorious day. And they are speaking in Draconic. So it's just like, it's, it's like what you hear Rasa speak and Caleb sp- speaks it before, but it's coming from little bodies. My lord! My lord! Choose! Choose! We uh, had heard of the of the temple within the mountain. Long have we dug at the mountain side. Long have we been put out by goblin kind, mankind, most sentience. But we knew we held on to faith. That the dragon would one day return to the kingdoms. And Rasa just... I think this is for you. Caleb, what are they saying? (laughs) Uh, They have long awaited Arjan and Rasa's return. They have been working very hard to make sure that the area is clear for their arrival and they are being besieged by humans and goblins. Oh, nine hells. He has followers. They call themselves adventurers, a word that is cursed in our long lineage. Oh. To be an adventurer. 
wants to be an exterminator of our kind. Great, powerful winged one. We offer you our treasures. Bring forth the treasures. And you see like more kobolds come and they are spilling like, it looks like a maybe a knife at one point, scraps of, of large metal. Like when you had looked out earlier and you're like, where did all the siege engines go? Where did all of the stuff go? It has been broken down and turned into cobalt goodies and you see like one of them puts down a plate but then the plate snaps shut like it's a trap of some sort and he's like oh sorry that one's actually mine and the chief like slaps his hand he's like not yours anymore you fool put it with the treasures does this please you my lord and the They're goblins all it. bow and, and and go off to the side and rasa is just like Oh, no. Are you keeping them? Arjan, um, having followers is a lot of responsibility. You need to walk them and feed them occasionally. Oh, my gosh. You're a leader now. Wait, do you want to... Hold on. Hold on. Gwen puts up a finger, turns to Arjan, goes up to their face. No. I'm not gonna... Um, They destroyed the side of this mountain as though it were merely an anthill. <laughs> Did we? Yeah, Vrasa and yeah. Arjan blew <laughs> out the side okay. of the mountain to get to this place. Hi. I'm not really who you think I am. Uh, I kind of know him. But uh Okay, I'm not. I'm not sure what to do here. Um, I'm not uh, planning on staying. Arjan, give me a moment. Uh, Corey just. <laughs> the the, 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 the guy like in charge. Tell me the name of your master. Writes his hat. We have no master. It sort of brushes, but I, Tuggy, am the leader. Tuggy? Tuggy. It is a noble name. Tuggy. A name that has been passed down through generations. It's a tragic name. Can we keep she, them? She just points back at Arjun. What's his name? Uh, and he says a word in Draconic, uh, which, Calum, you and Arjun both hear as being, like, the savior. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh no. More literally translated, one who will deliver us. Oh no. Okay. Corey Why turns around to Caleb. I waited. Caleb was there. That Jonas's. That wasn't That wasn't his father's name, right? Shine his claws. No. I go look back at Arjan. Clean slate. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'm. I wasn't planning on staying here. I was actually going to go back to my home in Alira. You are. Would you like to come? Is there a and get out that of here? stretches from here all the way to the Northlands? Sort of. It'll take several trips, but I could do it. Nah, we have a house here. Oh, true. You have. We're gonna let them in the house. We're going to bring them to the scene, and that's gonna be it. Yeah, it's only polite. That's fair. Um, I'll go get the kettle on. Uh, my okay. my lord, we are excellent at burrowing and oh. and setting traps. And if you need mm. mountainside dug, art. I do People need a mountainside dug. Doing so for a millennia. Um, how many are there? Uh, and kind of like having Calum relay this, uh, yeah. they let you know that there are in total roughly 32 of them. Mm. Well, they could fit in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like a society. No, we, we are legion. It is, no, yeah. it is a small, like uh, these are the ones that don't go off and don't do anything. 
because they have been so they believe tasked with guarding this mountain where uh their their savior will will surely arrive uh in a in a bout of fire and acid and lo and behold what has happened this day but yeah so if you offer to take them just go get your things get your things we are leaving this place um, Arshan, where yeah. are we going to take them? Resting. Oh, okay, cool. Did, do you, should we, like, make sure they know not to, like, steal stuff? Maybe we should go over what the ruler wants. I don't know that I have enough time to do that. What do you mean? What time do we not have? I only have 20 minutes left in this form. Oh, yeah. I mean, but but you just tell them that you're going to revert to something that's more their size. I guess maybe we shouldn't lie to them, but that feels easier than trying to explain magic. Since they think these are treasures, it points to the pile of garbage. Cory pokes her head out the door. Do you think herbal's all right? Ooh. Maybe something hardy. Hmm. I'll see what I can do. Uh-huh. If you need help leading, I got a little experience. Okay, it's going to take them a while to get their things. Yes, and uh, although Rasa does suggest that she could carry a, quite a few of them on her back, fly them, like, she could even, like, pick up basically their whole village with, like, two of her claws. The whole thing does not take so, very long. There's no need to worry about that. Once, mm, hang on, I'm, I need to look up something. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, our John would just uh, say, yeah, yeah, uh, gather your things if you're if you're okay with going to the Northlands and getting out of here because I I wasn't planning on staying here, uh, and I don't think I'm going to be able to go around and get the people from attacking your home out today but i can i can get you out of here they all All they all nod and and they are on board wherever you take them they are they are here they're here and they want to be helpful can i pick through the treasure to see if there's anything of worth yeah um roll an investigation check you got it boss Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, mo- it's, it's mostly all rusted. It's it's rusted and, and broken uh, for the most part. And th- th- I think that the nicest thing that you see uh, is a knife or uh, the makeshift variant of a knife. Uh, where it is just like a shard of metal that has been tied around with reeds to a stick. And it doesn't even look like the metal is like wedged in between the top. Like this is rudimentary. But the thing that is so interesting is that it looks, you, you know it's metal and you can feel that it's metal, but it looks like it has the, it looks almost like it's a darkened glass. Hmm. And it strangely does not look tarnished. Just on the back end, it takes a little lick. Porous, not porous. Of the metal? Yeah. Not porous. But, hmm. magic. Tastes like magic. And even more, again, Cobalt's so like, that one can taste magic! <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Clearly, these are the ones we should have been following all along. And like, yeah, these kobolds are are bringing. Uh, uh, we referenced Lord of the Rings before this started. Imagine little kobolds doing the walk to Helm's Deep, uh, up the side, uh, up the side of this mountain uh, to go into Gideon. And as soon as the first one comes in. Uh, uh, we'll say, like, went in in the background, Gideon, like, you see them ejected, and from Gideon, please wipe your shoes. Uh, actually, uh, just follow me, I mean, and Arjun will, uh, bring up his claws, and, um, just kind of bring them forward and drag down as if he's tearing a curtain fabric or something um and it's leaving a little tear in space time on the other side is um it's just southwest of Berstain. it's in between the city and the uh mountainside of the pit uh i'm gonna use a uh, 17 hit die to cascade hell yeah I am here for this. So yeah, these kobolds seeing this gate open, just look at each other, nod, nod. And then they like, Yahoo! Ah! And, like there is just like a little parade of them going through. Uh, as you cast a, what is it, ninth level? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. It's, uh, 17 hit die yeah, to cast a ninth level spell. As yeah, Calum, you've seen like, Arshan's done magic before. Usually, like, little magic here and there. Like, or healing people. And, like, the biggest thing that you've seen him summon is, is the dragon spirit. Compass room on yeah. the yeah, dragon like, spirit. That kind of thing. Like, the fact that Arshan is now, like, you can see, like, there is, like, a, a sense of... It's like his body is moving in a way that he's done this hundreds of times. And just confident tear points to the kobolds and the kobolds are like yip, yip, yip. oh uh, yeah arjan will uh go with him and he'll uh uh back in rasa too yeah rasa goes through and she is like looks is like just mouth agape at you this whole time and is just like this has been a very exhilarating set of hours I am having a very good time. Um, uh, do y'all want to bring the house to Vestain, or do you want to go somewhere else and we'll meet up? Oh, I want to talk to Kendek, so I'll come with you. Okay, somebody's got to bring the house. Well, well, Corey and I will bring the house. Okay. Bring the house where? Corey, Vestain. like, walks up holding a tea tray full of tea. Corey, you look out and you see oh. that there is like an active, like a, a sustained active portal from that is just showing Verstain, like off in the distance. Like it is almost like a mural that you're seeing, but kobolds are walking into it like a Mario 64 painting and just appearing on the other side. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, I see. <laughs> so it's just offering to. <laughs> everybody else you see uh tuggy the cobalt chieftain uh will will take some as a gracious offering and will like like just pours it into their mouth and like it's spilling on the side and you can see that like it is hot for them but sees the other of you enjoying it just this is good oh yes ah <laughs> like speaking in in like the most he took common 101 you know it, mm -hmm. mostly phrases such as we surrender uh please don't kill us uh that sort of thing i have children uh i have children <laughs> you wouldn't uh it's my birthday you wouldn't kill a little guy on his birthday would you that kind of thing it looks like he knows survival words uh I see. mostly ah I'll take the teapot away from him. Uh, Gwen is going to, as everything is wrapping up, you see her kind of just like toddle off into the background. 
and then there's like a, a already broken wall and <laughs> see Quen just like <laughs> like punch it she, there's a big hole and then it starts <laughs> crumbling down yeah and maybe. she turns around and from a distance just goes yeah yeah roll a uh roll a strength check for me we'll say add your proficiency huh? bonus to this because this is unarmed combat That's a natural 20. <laughs> uh, Thanks, D&D Beyond. For, for comedic effect, it is basically... For 33, just... It's like an entire back wing. Like, there's, like, a hallway that's, like, collapsed now. Like, you did some serious damage with just that one punch because you realize... Mm -hmm. I mean, you weren't aiming for it, but you hit one of the keystones mm -hmm. that was placed. And, like, you didn't think a melted building had keystones. The narrator... <laughs> the melted building did not have keystones until this very moment. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you. Uh, it is up to you and Corey to head on back uh, to Verstein with the house. Uh, Arjan, you will be spending some time to integrate uh, these kobolds into society. I'm not really integrating them into Verstein. It's just... We're going to set something up on this mountainside. Okay. And you kind of give them the, the general plan, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are they are here for it. They they are ready. Um, and Rasa will assist uh, with the overall process. Uh, if need be. Otherwise, I mean, oh. do you see him hang out? Um, at least for, uh, and like the people of the town are like, oh, it's back. And like, they like in the distance can see red dragon and, um, at least some of them. And they are, uh, they are clearing a space in town for her to come in and land. Um, should she so choose that being said, um, uh, Calum, you wanted to speak with Kendek? Yeah. To the forge. Okay. Dragon forge. Yeah, and you see that uh, at, at this point, Kendek, um, he's, like, getting out of his lava pool, and he's, like, shaking his leggies uh, of loose magma that he has that's attached to, uh, that's attached to his uh, scales. And then he uh, just sort of, like, looks at you, gives a, a gentle wave. Hi, Kendek. Sorry, bad time? Uh, no, just finishing for the day. Uh, Kalem will pull the knife out from his belt and present it to Kendek. Ever seen something like this before? Kendek. The blade, I mean. Yeah, Kendek will look at it. Uh, he shakes his head no. That was a three on the die. Cool. Um, um, and he uh, says only one way to know. Uh, and he'll go over and to um, like to, to a hardened piece of wood He'll sort of like, he'll like stab in with the knife. And Calum, you see that the knife just sinks in. Almost like, like it was like butter to a hot knife kind of thing. And then Kendek like pulls the knife back out. There's a clean cut into the wood. Calum will look to Kendek and just go, huh. Hmm. Uh, he'll reach behind him and pull out a uh, pinion. You available for some upgrades? Kendek will nod. Um, yeah. Okay. And um, they will, Kalen will work out the finite detail of the upgraded weapon. Okay. Sounds good. We can talk more about that over the time period to come. Yeah. Um, that being said, Corey and Gwen, you are able to return Gideon back to Verstein. Um, and with this being said, Corey. You had mentioned on break that you wanted to check in with Spring Corey as well, or go and visit, or have a moment with Olivia, or something along those nature. Uh, yes. Assuming, well, okay. Assuming the timeline uh, lines up, I'd like to leave a season here mm -hmm. to help out wherever uh, Corey is needed. Uh, and then send like Corey Prime over to remerge uh, re with um, Olivier. But honestly, well, yeah, okay, that would work. Um, 
yeah, she'll leave a sending stone with um we'll say summer Corey, uh, and autumn Corey will go to Olivia and remerge with spring Corey. Okay. And that's perfectly fine as well, because I feel like summer Corey would be the most wanting to fight with Gwen. Um <laughs> so, uh summer Corey, uh you and Gwen are uh if Gwen is is down for it, it seems like she always is. Uh up to spar. Um Gwen is a lot stronger than when y'all were like, haha, let's wrestle. I'm sure that these uh cave fishers aren't going to be too big of a problem. Way, 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 way back. Um uh but uh, we can also resolve that here shortly. Gwen, you have also been training with a pit fiend. Mm-hmm. Like, that's also not for nothing. Like, mm-hmm. it's one of those, like, you always have to, like, kind of go off into the woods. You can't just be fighting a pit fiend in town. But you did also want to start building a coliseum uh, yeah. it, uh, in your town as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, what better opening show than their chieftain? Uh, versus a pit fiend. Oh, yeah. Let's be real here. Um, so, uh, we're going to be getting into that as well. Um, Caleb. Yeah. There was talk of a proposal. Oh, the, yeah, there was. Uh, at the beginning of this session. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, when do you think Calum would, uh, like, how long would pass, do you think, before Calum is either pressured by his friends into actually doing the thing uh, or finally says, like, I'm going to do the thing? I think Kendek and Calum are in the forge just hammering her away. Calum sighs, pushes back from his seat where he's inscribing Ruth into a scabbard to make sure the fucking knife doesn't eat its way through it turns to Kendek I gotta go I'll be back Kendek nods I know what I must do but I don't think I have the strength to do it I'll carry you Mr. Frodo (laughs) (laughs) alright anyway uh, if anyone asks um I'm in the Feywild. Kendek shrugs and nods like that is a completely reasonable and understandable thing that you do often. Cool. I'll see you later. Rips a hole into the... Sorry, yeah, Wait, Glenn. does does Caleb want somebody to take a crystal spear of this? Like someone hiding in the bushes? No, that's even more pressure on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have someone sketch it real quick. <laughs> Just a candid camera of Caleb fumbling his note cards to, pro- to like propose to Diane. <laughs> that would be even better. You know what Gwen should should do? Huh. Gwen should stay at home and do a drawing of what she th- uh, how she thinks it's gonna go. Oh my god! Yes, I'm gonna do one right now. Incredible. But I guess. Caleb's going to target a spell circle in the Court of Spring. Okay. And warp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you do, um, thankfully, Court is not in session, um, which is always a plus. Uh, there are still a few people that are like, ah, you can't be. Oh, it's you. It's fine. And like they, I... like they, they remember uh, and kind of encourage you. Like you can really go through the proper channels to get here you don't just always have to you know it's fine um and they kind of ask like oh what are you doing uh or is there any way that we can help you that kind of thing um i need a ring and some flowers uh what kind of ring magical uh uh mundane or nate i'm gonna propose to my girlfriend and then one of them just are you not dating diane the bar yeah Yes. Um, And they pat you on the shoulder. Good luck. Thanks. And they scamper. And you are uh, the flowers that you are brought back. Uh, Do you ask for any specific flowers? 
pulls out the list of like, all right, so these are the like the material world version. Do you have anything that? Uh, yes, yes. Are you wanting uh, an arrangement, one of each? Uh, do you have preferences? Uh, some of these do grow in different colors here on the Feywild. Do you have? There, there's a, a moment where Caleb's like, wait, you know what? Fuck it. And he walks out into like the market district and does some shopping on his own. Okay. Um, and I will tell you what happens when he meets up with Diantha. For sure. Uh, so yeah, when um, do you basically like, hey, we should meet, and then like you pick the place, or are you, or is this more of a like, where are you, and you're going to be going to her? I think we're gonna. I'll meet her like at her place. Okay. It just a, a private thing. Yeah. No, and when you arrive, um, she is. She has a shooting range, like built into the back of her house, and she's just like blast, 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 and like she's just practicing. Uh, but when you arrive, you see that like she takes the rifle and like does a flip with it, like you would normally do with like more of like the um. Uh, oh, the, the Rossi old... Ranch hand yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Terminator. Yeah, kind of like that. But as it does, you see that it morphs back into her ring. Um, and she uh, looks over to like she looks over at you and the sun is perfectly set in that like mid spring <clears throat> twilight. The air has a twin a tinge of like that orange and purple fading in. And she's just standing there with that badass motherfucker belt her big old combat boots laced and a red bolero and all concept of a cool Calum gets shattered because Calum has shown up in a, one of those baby blue powdered um, prom suits with the ruffles. <laughs> Under he and Farron that is always... exactly what I drew. <laughs> <laughs> no. What are levels, baby? <laughs> Under one arm, there is a Venus flytrap. <laughs> we t take a take it. a take photo a of it on your phone. It. So a Venus flytrap. And he like the suit isn't even like fitting him well. He looks disheveled. I didn't know whether to walk or run here, so I power walked. And she, like, looks at you like you. Do you? Would you like some water? Come in. Like, oh yeah, here, please. come in. What is what is all of this? What are you? What is? Think. You went to the market district. Yeah. Um. Why did you go to the? Is. Is there like some sort of benefit to wearing this? Like, please tell me that there's some like defense against charm. <laughs> that you might get an immunity to charming others that's present here? Uh, well, Corey said to be unconventional, and so, well, I couldn't think of anything more unconventional than this. Yeah? And what'd she say to be unconventional about? A flower. Venus flytrap. <laughs> like, it has... It's far more active, and she just fly trap nice she like she holds it and kind of like sets it down onto the counter uh and from her ring a little like like some water press the digitation to water it uh and then um she like has it near the windowsill and she turns around flower suit and Corey told you to give me a flower well, I had to do some research on the language of flowers, and Venus Flytrap wasn't on there. Hold, pulls out a book and looks through it. And she says, hey, and kind of like takes you by your chin and tilts your head up so you are no longer looking into the book. And she says, while looking at you, what's gotten you so worked up? that you're researching the language of flowers. That you come here wearing possibly the worst suit I've ever seen. It's a bold choice. 
the suit seller said it made me look dashing. And I hate to admit it, but he's kind of (laughs) right. Like, I don't know what it is. It's kind of working for me. Oh, you know what it is? And Caleb will stand um, just releasing himself from the uh, the hold. Mm -hmm. Uh, He'll point up at the um, basically like a light bulb and essentially make it strobe with minor illusion. And he like has the Saturday Night Light uh, fever (laughs) pose going on. And she Eh? crosses her arms and kind of leans back against the counter of her house. No, I know it does it for somebody. She just has like an eyebrow raised at this point. Says, okay. Hey. Yeah. She like grabs you by like the, the like waist of the, of the suit coat that you're wearing. Kind of like pulls you in. And she says, you said, and we agreed that if you came back after defeating Orthus, which you did, that we would have a conversation. I think that you're trying your best to have that conversation. So if I may be so bold, would I believe that you are trying to work up the courage to do is to ask me to engage. It will stop her. I think it will mean a lot more if I say it. And then she looks at you with the most daring, shit-eating eyes and grin that follows with that crooked smile. She says, then do it. Woo me. (laughs) Diantha Barbatos. When I said that I want to spend my life with you, I meant it. And lords of death, worms in the sky, be damned. I'm going to make it happen. So will you do me the honor of becoming my spouse? And before you can finish the word spouse, there is a yes. And your eyes were, I'm assuming, like closed as you were trying to like get Form the words out. You just feel her lips against yours. Oh, okay. As I'll she take that says, as a yes. yes. Um, and as she pulls back, she also has the realization, you're going to have to meet my parents. I am going to have to meet your parents. I think... I think I'm more afraid of them than I am of Orcus. She nods and says, well, if you killed Orcus, I mean, that would probably be a good thing. If you killed my parents, I'd probably have to hunt you down. And uh, I'm sorry, there's no spouse about that. That that would have to happen. That is in itself its own kind of fun, though. She, like, raises an eyebrow. Just stop it. (laughs) <laughs> pushes you a little bit oh gosh um well i've got some downtime coming up um let's plan a meeting i guess and uh she says uh that she will do her best to to plan the meeting um she will uh, start working on a guest list. Uh, and it seems like she like as like like she takes you into her study and like opens up uh, the the bottom part of a of a dresser. And there is a thick book that looks like it has been paged through hundreds of times that its overall composition does not look like Diantha was the one who made it. But when she opens the book cover, you can see that it is more like, like the script of a younger person saying like property of diantha barbados bless and she just starts flipping through it she's like okay i have several ideas 
uh, and starts <laughs> like uh, starts like looking through uh, this book with you. Already very excited about this. I mean, now, if we go ahead, yeah, sorry. We will be going into a stretch where there will be downtime. There will be a total of one month of downtime between where we are at now and the date of the wedding. Calum is going to be occupied getting the wedding taken care of and making sure that everything is situated on his end. How do the rest of you want to help your friend prepare for his wedding? I had something that I wanted to do. Yes. In uh, in the few remaining moments mm -hmm. of uh, being a dragon. Uh, just as we um, as we got there. Um, Rosa, I know you're going to be with Tiamat uh, for a while and you have your place in the actual sea but I know the first few bits that you've made here haven't been mm, nearly as relaxing as I wish they would have been would you If you wanted a place here that's more comfortable for you, uh, would you want something like that? Not permanent if you don't want, but a place for you. As permanent as you will let me. I will not make it my lair, for I understand the implications of making a layer in maybe I can make it balmy by being here oh this is a dormant volcano I actually know it's active there there are magma flows so well sounds like it would be cozy and I am glad to stay here in whatever capacity uh that is comfortable for you. The air is cleaner here. And the skies seem bigger when I am with you. Uh, if I go over, I take damage, right? Uh, yes, you roll against your HP at that point. So when you it's start- still the hit. It's still the hit mm -hmm. die, or is still it the same bigger? hit die? But then uh, you start subtracting that from your overall HP. Uh, I am going to use twenty for divine intervention. Okay. Uh, and ask Tiamat uh, to uh, in this. Uh, in this haven that I have made, um, create a space for Rasa out of the mountain. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think you have to roll for it. Not at not at twenty. Yeah, not at twenty. So yeah, as you like, call upon Tiamat to ask of this thing, it is like there is a rumbling and the rock and and dirt of of this mountain begin to fall away almost like it is revealing this space that is perfectly made for rasa a wind sweeps through and any kind of like dust or detritus that is there is gone and there is a full area i would say uh uh like several rooms there's a lava flow area where she can bathe in the back uh, should should she so choose? Uh, you have given Rasa a place to stay on the material plane, and there's just like 
a big old nosebleed, and then uh, the form fades. That took 99 hit points. <laughs> uh, and cool. Rasa, um, like, as you, like, kind of stagger, like, she'll, like, catch you with her large claw. Um, and she gives you a, a big nuzz. Uh, and um, she's she's over the moon. She didn't know what necessary... Like, she knew that you were, like, meaning a place, but, like, Tiamat has... Tiamat had a home and garden phase that stuck around for a while. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the reno after the demo. This has been, like, completely outfitted in just the way that a red dragon would want. Um, and there seems to be a specific addition that is something that you have seen in terms of size before, but it is not something that you have seen with the ability to make active. And it is what appears to be a large gateway uh, made of stone that kind of has these draconic letterings around the side. But there are letters that are missing out of the gate. But in front of you and Rasa are a set of these stone tiles that complete the missing sequence. Uh, completing the missing sequence will then allow you uh, to have kind of like a backdoor ent uh, a backdoor entryway into uh, Ross's horde on the Astral Sea. Uh, so Rasa does not have to go far from her treasure uh, in order to maintain. Okay, right. like, what what Rasa is the theme of your like, wedding? Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, Calum, uh, what's the theme? What's the theme of your wedding? There's a theme? So, I oh, feel God. like... I'm the only one who's actually planned a wedding here, okay? This is the list of things you need. Corey, get on the list of things for the Feywild, and then we're gonna have to get the vendors, we're gonna have to get the table setups, you're gonna have to figure out what you want for the centerpiece, what are even your colors... Is it going to be a summer, winter, a uh, spring theme? What are we talking here? It's definitely going to be a spring theme. Okay. Corey? Yes? I, I just went through a list of things. Did you not listen? I I was listening. I have a piece of paper here and I'm writing it down. <laughs> it's just a blank, blank piece of paper. <laughs> 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 now stop at the beginning. <laughs> I took all of that time to find the piece of paper, and now uh, so, I have it. So let's go. What am I say supposed to spend this for? What? Yeah, oh, we need we need alcohol, food. We need the flower vendor. We need the people who are going to set up and take down the the whole chairs and the. We need people. We need to find people who provide the chairs. Um, we need someone who's uh, going to do the music. I can probably just cut costs and we can get married inside the mansion. Okay. Are you going to decorate? I can, yeah. We're going to need to give him some notes. Mm, fair, fair. What am I going to do with this boiling water? Why do you have boiling water? I. Nope, that's the wrong book. That's what? pregnancy, Calum. Oh, God. Are you pregnant? Is she pregnant? No. I, why did you assume he was pregnant first? How does that? I don't know how Shatter Kai work. <laughs> I don't want to assume anything. So, I feel like leading up to this, there is all there is uh, vendors that uh, Arjan seemed like he was he was pretty down uh, to be able to start looking into. Uh, uh, Gwen, you said, uh, I feel like you and Corey kind of take it amongst the two of you to be like, we're going to decorate this thing. We're going to plan. I had the idea, uh, that Corey, uh, you think to yourself, use plant growth to make flowers, use plant growth to make flowers. However, the idea oh. of just talking to your mom, right? Like of, of yes. kind of bringing that up. And I, mm -hmm. because I like the scene of Corey and Gwen being like, we need to set, like, we need to plan a wedding for one of our mm -hmm. friends, for Calum. And mm -hmm. your mother, 
just stands from her desk, turns to the window and says, I've planned for this day. And she like cinches the window blinds shut. And as she does, you see that she like presses a button on her desk and like large like battle maps start just like appearing like on the desk on the wall she's like all right this is how we're going to break up the people that we're inviting <laughs> these are the areas where we have here we have food here oh we have God. drinks here bathrooms you want over here but between the mingling space so that way if you are grabbing your hors d'oeuvres as they are cycling around you are not too far away from if you need to use the restroom refresh in yourself but a bit that being said, we are going to want Diantha's family on one side. Does mm -hmm. Caleb have mm -hmm. any family? I know that you said he hung around. What was their name? Off constantly? Off continuously? Yes. Yes. Off constantly. Yes. Are they front row guests or are they second row or just intermingled? Front row, certainly. Front row yeah. guests. Understood. Um, and she is like... We're going to color code this shit. Oh, <laughs> when you say color code... Corey's mother scoffs and she brings a hand over the battle map that she has and like they belong to different factions they glow with like yellow blue red like she had a wedding planner phase <laughs> that you realize there are bridezillas and then uh -huh. when the wedding planner starts going off on it there might be a reason. I think your mom is probably a bit too intense uh, of a <laughs> wedding planner for most people. Uh, but oh, certainly. This is of, uh, of high importance. Your mother has Corey's taking one on the chin here for Kayla. Oh, yeah. No, and she and you There's can There's a see... reason she's been putting her own wedding off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's that dead. It's that deadpan stare of why won't you let me help you? Hmm. Like, you know I'm good at this. You know I'm great at this. Uh, but your group is able to get uh, everything that you need to done. Is there anything else that you feel needs to happen, wants to happen during this time? Calum, is this going to be small, medium, large wedding? Uh, Corey's mom, uh, Ixnade, using Gideon, unless you wanted to use it as like a backdrop for the wedding, because there are going to be too many people uh to fit reasonably inside of a house with that good of seating We're not oh i know i was gonna use a magnificent mansion oh okay yes. yeah uh, a magnificent mansion um uh she wants to know the floor plan uh beforehand so that way she can also continue to help uh uh set things up and station them oh um bertrand like uh just showing the magnificent mansion to um Corey's mom um if she goes by a different last name, right? Uh, she's Calmia Letifolius. If Miss Letifolius here needs anything, please assist her as best as you can, um, giving her permission to change any of the room decor to suit her needs. Um, sure, the main hall. And there is a nod from the unseen servant and then looks over towards uh, where Corey's mom would be. There is just the outline and she is already walking down the hall, snapping her fingers at like... Come on, like we, there's no time. Uh, we need to renovate this entire place. Um, and she does. She spends the next several weeks uh, making sure that your magnificent mansion is now a magnificent wedding venue uh, with a, 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 a slight rustic feel to it, but you know, like 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 Easter time rustic. You know, like there's still a little bit, uh, but there's also like very vibrant yellows like you can tell like she's in summer form most of the time even when she is in spring form it is like that late spring early summer like she never truly leaves summer uh but oh my god does she like when she like spring form is the wedding planner yeah like version of her that is why that's you incredible have, that's why you do not ever see her in this way uh it looks like she purposefully does not enter into this form because she knows that she gets into a particular way, but you all came to her. Uh, God bless her. So she is in the process of of making through uh, making sure of this, Calum. Uh, you had already sent me uh, some of the individuals that you would like to uh, invite to this wedding, as well as general placements for them. Incredible. 
Uh, other individuals of note who have been offered an inv invitation. Redbeck, the Kalen of the Summer Isles, has been invited. Cypress has been no. invited. No? Yeah, he's invited. And I'm not okay. a dick. <laughs> okay. Cypress has uh, has an invitation extended to them. Uh, Caleb, you also wanted to extend invitations to Mistra Saloon, the Raven Queen, uh, and uh, quite a few other uh, high-profile individuals as well, uh, including Amaris and uh, Zarina. Surprisingly, they all agree. Uh, it seems, I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> it seems like uh, the ability to project oneself uh, is totally fine. Other individuals that you have invited, uh, Ozzy slash Osmond, uh, whose plus one is going to be Olin, the deaf cleric of Saloon. Uh, yes! As uh, they have come to this wedding, uh, seemingly to have a good time. Uh, off constantly, uh, obviously, is going to set aside all of the plans that they have. Uh, and Prescott, you can see, cleans up well. You know, he, he doesn't look happy to be here necessarily. Like, Farron is, like, doing that, like, my man, my baby boy. And Mugwort is just, like, full-on crying uh, <laughs> seeing you in this way. Just like, oh, my boy. Like, they are both, like, my son, my son. Um, Prescott and Prescott's and going, like, no son of mine. Yeah. And, like. Uh, uh, but you can see that, like, as soon as he identifies where the bar is set up, uh, that he is going to be having a much better time. Um, of course. Other individuals that are here that have been invited. Uh, Hotterai was invited. Uh, and Makoth was also invited to this wedding. As well as, I believe you said, the entirety of the Zesty Anchor. Uh, no, the, like the crew. The, the staff the... of the Zesty Anchor. Like, Fang is here. Huddle is here, and he Fang's just like, this is the craziest wedding I've ever been to. Like, I, I close my bar for this. I close my bar for this. And people are like, oh, oh your bar's never closed, though. Um, and are like, like they like every all your friends from the material plane uh are are definitely like, man, I don't know. Any like, are we allowed to eat the food in the Fey Wild? Is that a thing? I heard that wasn't a thing. Maybe it's a thing. And like Mugwort's like, I hope it's not a thing, and is already <laughs> shoveling like <laughs> A bunch of food into his mouth. Um, that being said, uh, the rest of the cast. Uh, Gwen, you have been invited to this wedding. Uh, Chua also has been... I'm a little busy. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> ah, okay. Sorry, I can't make it. Chua also yeah. has been invited to this wedding. Uh, and sh she's never left the material plane before, let alone oh. for a wedding. Uh you say oh like that's an uncommon thing for the majority of people. Um, uh, but yeah, so Chua uh, is is in attendance as well, and it seems like she is like she's standing a little bit taller. It's it's the equivalent of like old person in Florida. Like the weather better suits Chua's older bones mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in the Feywild. Um, she seems very excited about it. And uh, Gwen says to Chua in this moment, she's like, okay, so for tonight, I'm not your chieftain and you're not the sky watcher, okay? Yes, my chief. We're just here. <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is what I do tonight and what you do tonight, after tonight, we don't talk about it, okay? Okay. So if you want to let loose a little bit, get I your would, groove on. I would rather let loose uh, on the material plane where if I go off somewhere and get lost, uh, that it is not a whole deal. That's fair. Do I need to put a tracker on you? Are you going to run off? Uh, no, but if this was on the material plane, I would partake in uh, uh, some mushroom caps. Uh, that I have been saving uh, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a uh, a more fantastic time. But okay, okay. This seems like I it is you. going to still be fun. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let's go and enjoy us uh, enjoy ourselves. Uh, that cheers. Gwen's already like halfway through her first cup. <laughs> did you bring Philip with you as a plus one, or did you bring someone else? I well, if I could find him, I'm sure I could. <laughs> you have five yeah. sending stones between the two of you. 
That's right. Yes, I would. I would okay. bring my husband. Okay. You guess. I uh, guess. I'm gonna cramp my style though. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Philip is here. He seems. Uh, he seems to be enjoying himself. Uh, and you can tell that over the last month, Philip has really, uh, uh got, you know, a a better footing on on who he is. He he seems like he's doing better. Uh, as a person now that he's sort of like set out and started this this small time trading company but like he he's guessing that things are really gonna pop off and like uh uh roll a d100 for me oh my goodness oh that's not D D beyond roll uh 88 88 okay thankfully with an 88 philip does not attempt to use this wedding to form market connections. Uh, he seems to read the room a little bit better uh, because you rolled an 88. So uh -huh. that is a good, good. thing. Uh, um, I Raiders. will say, uh, hi everyone. I will say that Gwen has uh, no money. Uh, so she is going to ask Arjan for some money for a gift for Caleb and Diantha. How much money? Uh, like a hundred gold. Okay. What's appropriate? I don't know. I I was just going to get them a handcrafted table or something. The only wedding that I've been to was yours. Fair. Okay. I, and I don't remember getting you anything. I also don't remember you getting me anything, but <laughs> that's not because I kept track. It's because I there was a lot of people there. Insight and check. <laughs> I don't think Gwen's lying. <laughs> she actually did. Five. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. Our 14. Son. She's totally calling you out right now. Oh, no. Um, okay. <laughs> so Gwen has brought Philip and Chua. Uh, Chua also suggested uh, that it has been so long and since you were going to the Feywild. The puppies should meet their dad. Um, and so Cybra uh, and Skipple, the blink dog, uh, have a reunion. Uh, the, the, young, the young pups now, uh, young blink wolves, uh, have, have met their dad. And they, seem, they all seem to have be like being a good, like having a good time. And like as the, like when the wedding procession starts, the, the blink wolves will actually like line up and sit as if they were in folding chairs, like on the side. It looks like they are all here as a family, uh, as well in the Skipple Feywild. Skipple has a little bow tie on. Yes. Um, Skipple is wearing like, it looks like a little collar and a long tie. Um, it's very cute. Uh, the kids have bow ties. Um, it's it's adorable. One of them has a bandana, so that way you know that like they're the adventurous, spunky one. Um, it's a great time. <laughs> uh, so uh, that is uh, what uh, who came with Gwen, uh, Arjan. Uh, are you bringing uh, a plus one to this to this Fey Wild wedding? Did we did we accommodate? Accommodations have been dragon. made uh, for the event of somebody bringing a red dragon as a, as a dinner guest. There's enough food. There's enough drink. Uh, there's enough space, and not space, and not like enough space in uh, in the in the sense where it's like she can sit in like one corner and kind of be stuck there. It's more of like a large open um, uh, uh, mall style field. Can Rossi go to the Feywild? Uh. I will say yes. I, I would say that Rasa can go to the Feywild, but it is not recommended that she stay in the Feywild. Uh, but she is, uh, you know, she's she's fairly certain that, like, one night won't, like, one evening here won't cause uh, uh, any major issue. She's here on a visa. Yeah. She's got traveler's privileges. Uh, and it seems like the judges three are also... Like they have given brief accommodations to this as well, uh, as you know, one of their uh, highest-ranking employees is is getting married, and they want to show that they are 
they are a kind and wise governing body. Um, so, uh, uh, Kalem, would you also have invited Kendak? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so Kendak brings his plus one, which is Jirana. Jirana. Uh, and she is just like, this place is incredible! And, like, does not, like, she's just having a blast. She's from the far north a snowy place. Now it is eternally spring. And she's like, like, she's like all about it. And then you hear her sneeze. Oh no. And she oh, sneezes no. again. Uh, it seems oh, like, Oh no, she actually gets cold. Uh, turns out that springtime allergies, uh, can hit dragonborn just as hard as anyone else. Uh, she's having a great time, but there is that definite, like, she's going to be like doing the sniffles a lot. Um, but she's here having uh, a good time with Kendak. Strun is also there. It looks like the only Draconian who did not show up and most likely was not invited uh, was Ren. Uh, and oh, shit. Ren is fine with that. You know, like the town needs to run itself. Uh, needs needs to still be going. And, and we'll get him a to-go plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you um, are. <laughs> <there you> <laughs> um uh so yeah the the draconians and, and arjan's group have, have shown up mule is there and they are wearing like you know very fine clothes um cory i obviously i i your mother is there she helped plan this thing your father is there uh cat is there as well uh when hot showed up you could see that they actually had a little potted plant and there is uh, what looks like a small little laurel, uh, like no Aww. larger than like two inches tall. So small. Just very teeny, but they are like sitting in their potted plant, um, just sort of like like watching this. They're like waist high in dirt, uh, seeing all of this unfold. Um, uh, is is Olivia up for going to another wedding? Yeah, she's fine. With okay. Her. Uh, she and Autumn Corey will arrive with the rest of the guests. Yeah. Summer Corey is still running around with her mom. Like, she's just following and making sure everything goes mm -hmm. right. Um, but uh, Autumn Corey shows up in a uh, pair of slacks and, like, a night, like, one of those really frilly, like, sailor shirts. Uh, and then a green capelet over that. And she's got Olivette on her arm. Uh, and Olivette notedly. Uh, because you informed her that this would be a springtime wedding and not a uh, fall time wedding. She has a large sun hat that has a little bit of a veil around it. She's wearing sunglasses. Um, it's like a nice, uh, uh, a nice deeper purple dress that kind of accentuates her colors, but also still uh, contributes to the overall like Easter vibe. Uh, it's more mm. of like um, uh, uh, like a soft goth kind of thing. Like it's yeah. it's she has pastel goth is the is the yes. phrase of it. She has a pastel goth vibe going on, uh, and it's it's not really like a it's technically a sleeveless dress in that it doesn't go over her shoulders, but it sort of like wraps around the back of her neck, um, and it's sort of like a longer halter top. Thank mm. you. A halter top. Uh, I need to obviously just watch more fashion videos and figure out what the fuck clothings are worded because that's actually an important part of DMing. Um, but she's is looking to the tens as well. Um, and she is very glad. And like she makes a note about how it's kind of weird uh, to see you running around with your mom. Um, sh has she met your mother? Not yet. <laughs> Your mom is too I, I busy. Feel like... It's one of those, like, you're nice, yes, anyways. And, like, she chases <laughs> off after Summer Corey. Like, she does not give near, like, one of those, if anything, like, we'll address this after yeah. I am done. And she has, again, this, like, pinkish orange going on. Like, it looks, like, again, like that sunsetty color. Because she yeah. cannot, for the life of her, get out of Summer, of form, summer form completely. Yeah. Uh, she's just that kind of high-strung individual. It's a tropical spring, you know, um, just summer, but different. <laughs> there is, however, a singular moment where uh, Yuglon is there and, like, goes and, like, gives her a hug and a kiss. And she's like, oh, it's so good to see you. And then she sees Kat. Uh -huh. And she, like, stiffens a little bit. And, like, you can tell that it's one of those, like, she's not threatened. Mm-hmm. 
but there is a competition that has just immediately been forged in eyesight. She's not a jealous woman, but she does right. like to win. Uh, and at that point, like, she, like, nods and just catastrophe and just, it's nice to meet you. And, like, you can see, like, she, like, a little grating and just looks at Euglon and Euglon, like, has this big, like, I'm having a great time. She's like, I'm sure you are, sweetie. And, like, has to go and take care of the wedding again. Um, other individuals that meet up, uh, Makoth and Hotterai. Uh, and it seems like they they kind of like miss each other uh, as they're going th uh, as they're going through the uh, going through the majority of the wedding, but uh, eventually the two of them will meet. Uh, and it seems like they there is no animosity between them. Hotterai looks uh, immediately apologetic, and and has like Hotterai is good is not good at not expressing themselves is not good at like keeping that emotional mask on, especially when they're excited or, or in a way about something and seeing Makoth, you can definitely tell that, that Hotterai as, as much as the ends justify the means, he realizes what he did and he uses this opportunity to apologize. And Makoth sort of like, I accept your apology. We're much different people now. But this is not our time. We did like we did not both come here for this thing. Motions towards the motions towards the front. Um, uh, uh, other individuals that you end up meeting uh, again. Saloon and Mistra have arrived, and you see that Saloon uh, is a. You know, like she's she's wearing a respectable uh, respectable dress. She has nice glasses on. The blanket over her legs is um, uh, it's a much like it's it's a very finely made blanket. Like this looks almost like a silk covering for it, rather than uh, something more like cozy and woven. And she just has a large book with her uh, that she keeps open that will just have like exclamations. Um, <gasps> Sir Heck, thank you for the raid with Neon Lights Roleplay. We are in the middle of Hello. a fey wedding. Uh, but it's a play when, getting married. As soon as Saloon enters, she's just like, again, awestruck, jaw dropped. Like, if, if. Are you uh, meaning Elastray? Or, or. Uh, it's Mistra. Yeah. Uh, Goddesses oh, wait, of Magic, sorry. not Moon Elf. Okay, good. <laughs> Hello. Well, appears this wedding. Naked. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> um, uh, uh, so those two deities have appeared. Um, there is a like a, a like from the underside of a tree. Uh, you see, uh, you hear the like of bare feet on grass. And Calum, as you look down, you see that Amaris is just like running at you, arms up. Um. As you pick her up and you see Zarina, uh, the former Queen of Ravens, hair pulled back in a messy bun, graying, like she is old. It looks like the the well catch up of her not being uh having the abilities of a deity bestowed on her. Um she looks like she's is still in the process of of kind of like kind of coming to terms with the fact that like she breathes again you know like it's like one of those things but uh she comes up to you and just sort of makes mention that like she refused to put on shoes uh and uh it seems like Zarina was unable uh to get amaris to actually put on shoes uh as amaris just loves the uh owl uh the owl hoodie uh that she wears just this big like dress hoodie uh and according to amaris this is the fanciest piece of clothing that she has because you were the one who gave it to her um and so she is here for your wedding as well your uh your not daughter but also kind of your daughter my ward your ward um uh again the raven queen is here and you see that like these deities are like like with this large table for presents they're like each like 
you see uh, that like Mistra and Saloon have put something on the table. You see that the Raven Queen places something on the table. Uh, other people are like, and like the, we, I say you see like it's Calum. I most assure you that it is not Calum noticing these things because he is at the center. He's at the epicenter of this wedding that is happening. He is not seeing anything that is happening. He's not barely paying attention uh, or like having face registry of all of the people that are there. I have to ask, Calum, do you have a bridal party? Uh, uh, do you have a group with you? It's the four keeps. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, so the four keeps are up there with you. Uh, who walks with you? Uh, uh, down, uh, down to lead to the ceremony. Oh, it's definitely Farron. And I think, uh, Diantha and Caleb agreed that, um, this wedding might be a little non-traditional as the doors open up. Uh, Caleb is wearing this all white, um, basically suit. Um, you can see that there is, uh, basically a, a turtleneck sort of style, um, what is it? Neck that goes up around his uh, throat, um, going to the uh, very well tailored coat um, that the tailcoats hang towards the floor and a little bit away, almost like a cape. Okay. Um, you can see. Uh... And like as you um, uh, and and Farron, uh, who's also dressed well, and you can see that like you know they've they've styled their hair, they've sh they've shaved. Uh, it's already starting to grow back. Like Farron does not exist without uh, the slightest bit of a five o'clock shadow. Um, there's just something about him. Uh, maybe a magic item, maybe a curse, but he always has stubble. Um, and at the, as the two of you are belt kind of, of dwarven kind. As the uh, as the two of you are standing uh, at the head of this, um, and and Calum, you are like looking out at all of your friends and and the people that you have met along the way, as they look at you in front of uh, in front of this group. Farron just sort of like leans in, just you ready for this? I think of it as uh, another adventure. And you're never really ready for those. Well, that is true. Uh, but from what I heard uh, amongst talking, you were pretty ready to uh, take down a demon lord not too long ago. Honestly, that was a lot easier. I would imagine. And just two things that you need to remember. Take a deep breath. And she is going to be the most stunning that you have ever seen her in this moment. Uh, Calum will nod his head, inhale a little bit, and straighten his back. And Farron, uh, like, uh, like pat you on the back and, and see himself to his seat. And then the music picks up, begins to swell. Uh, and typically, you would assume that it is something, that it would be something classical, something something smooth and melodic. This is almost cacophonous as the doors then burst open again. And you see that there are like satyrs and fae that are just like throwing like confetti and flowers and all of the like... It is like everything was somber for you leading up, but Diantha was in charge of her own entrance and being the bombastic individual that she, she has is, a WWE entrance. Effectively, yeah. Like as all of this is happening, there is just like the screeching sound of a primordial fay as you look in the doorway and Diantha like like the mobile suit Gundam pose, right? Where it's it's the fucking beam like, saber our, up in yeah, the air. Yeah, it's beam saber up in the air. It's Diantha doing that, but you can see she's wearing this nice slick dress. That is just like totally form fitting to her. She doesn't have, she didn't bother with the veil, but she has like flowers that are in the side of her hair. And you can see that she's sort of done like more of a helmet uh, styling off to the side with her short hair. 
the piercings that she has, she's changed from metal to like jammies uh, to make it something more efficient. But you can see that like as she's walking forward, the the ties on the back of her dress, much in the same way as her combat boots, where she does not tie things in a traditional tie sense, that it has this like it has this uh, it actually looks like it has like a feather like a, a large corvid feather that has been like cats cradled into uh into the the ties of this dress and she comes up um and the uh that is when you finally meet her dad he is... i would think i had a meeting beforehand <laughs> you always tried but he was ne but they were never available like as as the as the pairing diantha is this loud bombastic larger than life person you see the tiniest like bottle coke bottle glasses dwarf or uh uh um elf eladrin eladrin that's like in between like spring and winter that is just ooh, and like like this like elves can get old this guy's old and like you see that like uh uh her mom as well who like now that like you've like oh my god and like look over to her side and there's like an old looking elven woman as well like like she has she had older parents to start and like uh you can hear them she's like never i thought that you would uh, engage in uh, material uh, activities is this diantha but he seems so nice he's so handsome too and like she's just like oh my god you're embarrassing me shut the fuck up like like she does not like she does not have the same level of respectful candor but like they interpret it as respectful like she could be like shut the fuck up mom and dad and they're like oh you like they they have have lived with her for hundreds of years um and uh the the dad uh as he comes up and like uh like brings uh diantha to the front clasps your hand calum and then like brings you in for a hug uh and in elvin says do not just be good to her be kind as well and he kisses your cheek and then uh releases your hands and he will go and take a sit and he like grabs like like old little little uh old little people claw hands uh his Ugh. his partner um uh and you know they like are holding just like watching their daughter uh you know get married to a very nice young man uh so calum the ceremony begins is there anything uh, in this moment, the four keeps, is there anything that you would like to say to reassure your friend? Uh, make her happy, compromise, be honest. Don't read books you're not supposed to read, okay? No, too easy. Will do. I love you, buddy. You're gonna be great. Love you too, Gwen. Okay. So. Ceremony. Uh, there will also be time for, for speeches afterward. That is of no worry. Uh, so ceremony. Calum. I... Uh, what would you like to say to Diantha as the two of you engage in uh, fey matrimony? Oh, fuck. I gotta say vows. You don't have to uh, have them prepared. Ha -ha. <laughs> I've got prayer vows. Uh, Diantha. I... God, facing down a demon lord was a lot easier than an entire marriage, but I think for you, I'd do it again. And there, there is, like, 
chuckles when you're like facing down a demon lord was easy, but for you, I'd do it again. And then, oh. And you can see oh. Diantha's dad is like, <laughs> you defeated Orcus, I heard. <laughs> Not by myself, but um, um, I started out very alone. Then I met Amaris. And then Farron, Prescott, Mugworth, Four Keeps. And from there, it just exploded. And I'm not so alone anymore. And I think at the center of that is you. You, you kicked open not only those wedding doors, but also the... It's very jaded to say the doors of my heart. No, keep going. It's fun. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Thank you. And I love you. I love you too. When throughout my life, I have sought to find something truly unique to experience feelings and thoughts and uh, everything that I've done I have done because it is something that I thought would show me what it meant to be one of a kind Imagine my surprise when I encountered the happy, the most beautiful man I've ever seen. Caleb looks he's, behind him. Uh, and he's dead. And there's like a, whoa, and be like, he got better. <laughs> he got better. But to say that our meeting was an unlikelihood. To say that it was unique would be a disservice. You are unlike anyone I have ever met. And in the time that I have known you, you have continued to surprise me. And there's like, her parents are just like, oh, surprise her. Oh. Like, uh, they're, how could that be? And she says, but there was one thing I wasn't surprised by. The events that led us here. I love you, Caleb. And for you material planers out there, I do. And then she gives you a big smooch. There is cheering and people going, yay. In the Philip middle is of blubbering. In the middle of all of the cheering, uh, Kalem will break the kiss and lean ever so close to her ear and say, Cyan Shin. That's my true name. And I've only ever given it to one other person who I trust completely. And you see that like her eyes like are are wide. And she gets a brief smile across her face and says, uh, she will lean in and she says, I will treasure it closer than my own. I think that's a good place to break. That is. We're all broken. <laughs> now, our game did go on a little bit long this evening. We just had a wedding, though. It was great. I'm loving this. I had a blast in our first episode of our of what is to be the final arc of the Four Keeps. And I think that we're off to a pretty good start. But I am always having a great time and always enjoying myself. Whenever these fine folk are on the channel, hey, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? I have some night in the courtyard stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> but hey, everybody, I'm RJ. You can catch me at rjs 22 on Twitter and Twitch, where I tweet about the nerdy things in my life and sometimes stream with my friends. Catch me over at the Hype Goblins channel on Thursdays and Sundays. Thursdays, we do an all third party D&D 5E campaign where, well, of course, we use third party material in all of our stuff. I'm playing as regular average Joe dude. Uh, we had an entire like uh, interview process and he's good at accounting and farm work. Nothing else. Um, Sundays, we're switching over to Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, I think our first episode will be on the 9th. So come check that out. It's it's an earlier slot, 10 a.m. EST, but hey, it's fun. Uh, finally, over on Saturdays, over at GGK, where we do uh, Parslings, which is a deck building game where you use cards to tell how much success you got. Uh, my character got shot in the leg. It's fine. Hi, I'm LB Hack'em Up. You can find me at LB Hack'em Up on the Twitters and the Twitches, where I am live on Fridays and Sundays. Uh, this uh, Friday is Lauren's birthday, so uh, we I, the Sunday group might be getting together to watch Friday Night Lights because that's important in our Sunday game and none of us have actually seen it. Uh, so <laughs> we might do that, or I might stream, not sure yet, but we'll definitely be live. On Thursday, Lauren is going to be doing a, a stream, and then on Sunday, we'll be back for probably the last episode of our Monster of the Week game. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, that's it. JanaeKeener.com. Boy, I'm Cyber. Uh, I stream sometimes on Cyber Wolf Trouble One on Twitch. Not right now. Uh, I'm taking a break. Um, you can find me on Sundays on Twitch.tv slash High Shelf Gaming where I'm running a Cypher System game in Hyrule from Zelda. It's a fun time. Uh, and then I'm here on Mondays, but you're already here. DanaeKinger.com Yo, speaking of DanaeKinger.com, that's me. Um, the person who runs that. DanaeKinger.com uh, The website is mine. Hi, I'm Danae Keener. Uh, you can find me there. I do nerdy drawings, mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on this channel. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter for now, uh, at Danae Keener. I've got a pinned tweet there. You can see my schedule and all the things I'm up to, DanaeKeener.com. And if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, hey, Acorns, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the indoor adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash indoor adventures. We do shows like this on Monday and Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And like LB said, you can find me there on Sunday, this coming Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you want to catch up on the last, possibly last session of at least season one of our monster of the week game because i know a lot of the players have been pushing lb uh for you know it's, we're having a good time we're having fun uh and you know i think that would be a righteous time as well but uh that being said i had a great game or i had a great time with this game blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are going to be going into our Patreon supported after show called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other, but also from the community. So if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk, feel free to join us again at patreon.com slash indoor adventures, and we will do our best to respond to those questions in kind. But that being said, I would like to once again say thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by. Thank you to these players for putting up with my bullshit once again this week. And we'll see all of you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye!